listening to the bomb hole. Bomb hole podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the bomb hole. You're going to slide down in big hills. You know what I mean? On the big, nice burgundy snowboard. All right. Here we go. Another episode coming at you presented by Pub Beer. Now, first things first, Stony Buds, how are we doing today? So good, my dog. Love it. To my left, we got Ben Ferguson in the booth. Ben, how are you doing today? Dude, so stoked to be here. Thanks for having me, boys. Well, we are happy that you're here. We're going to go on a little banter marathon. And for our listeners who don't know who you are, uh, B. Ferg is an absolute ringer, child prodigy, very decorated competitive rider with X Games bronze and silver, podiums at US Open, Grand Prix, Dew Tours. He's a freaking Olympian. He's three-time natural selection podium goer. He filmed parts for Joy, Hail Mary, Fourth Phase, all while competing. He's an unreal backcountry rider, ripping big mountain lines, wedges, natural terrain. He's one of the big dogs of our sport right now. About to drop his new project, Fleeting Time, which is uh, it's a bunch of Clydesdales just going berserk out there, buds. Let me tell you, <laughs> it is. It but definitely. Is. We'll, we'll get into we that. Some big big boys in the flick for sure. <laughs> yeah, Clydesdale. there's some hogs. We got some juggernauts out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but before we get into that, though, I do think we should start. I got my first hard hitting question: Is who is the king of uh, Bachelor? The king of Bachelor? I we talked about this before last time we were there. I said Josh Dirksen. <laughs> Okay, I think that's the correct answer. Yeah. I was wondering, Travis Rice, I heard, is looking at real estate there. Is he going to be the new, can, is he going to muscle out Dirksen, or how does that work? <clears throat> Dirksen might have to come home from Europe for a little bit and, you know, state the claim. And yeah, Keep true. it locked down out there, but. Yeah, he's losing his, uh, he's losing his crown. I'm not sure Ricky can take it from him, though. You can't just adopt it like that. True. Yeah. yeah. Where does um, Jake Price sit in the court? <laughs> I'm just curious, you know? <laughs> I think Price is probably pretty high up there. Is he a jester? Yeah, or that's maybe what I was a, a jester. <laughs> he's just like <laughs> Maybe like a rook. <laughs> he's always getting into some wild antics and doing interesting things. And Yeah, no, he crushes it. I would say Kurt Dog might be like vice president. VP. Dude, or vice king or whatever that's called. Vice king. <laughs> like yeah, for sure. Curtis is the man, dude. He's been holding it down for a while. Well, let's talk about where you grew up. So you're from Bend. Uh, how, how did you find snowboarding? What did that look like for you as a kid? Um, so my pops was always super into it. Like my pops got into it back in the nineties, lived in Boise, Idaho, started snowboarding out there at like, what's it called? Bogus Basin? Bogus Basin. Yeah. So been there a couple of times, but moved us out to, uh, Bend when I was probably like four or something and just started shredding just kind of like weekend warrior style and then brought me up when I was six for the first time. And then pretty shortly after you were kind of like a child prodigy from what I understood, it seems like by age 10 or something like that you're on Burton what what age did you uh did you start getting paid and get on Burton started getting paid when I was like 10 years old by Burton we would go to my mom would straight take us to all the little contests because every contest you won you would get like 500 bucks in the contract so we would just like run it up we'd go to the hood ones we'd go to the mammoth ones we'd go to the Tahoe ones me and Gabe and we just kind of clean up and Burton was giving you this it was like a contract incentive bonus. based. Yeah, it was just incentives. That was it. You but win, you get five hundred bucks. What does a ten yeah, year old like, do yeah, with five hundred bucks? Yeah, dude, put that shit in the bank. And mo- we're talking multiple five hundred dollars, right? Like, how many would you win? Let's say in a year. I mean, we would start. We would go to like four, five or six, you know. And then there was like nationals and, and stuff. You're winning too. them all, or no, not not all of them for sure, but. Would do pretty good in most of them. You're the wealthiest 10-year-old on the block, huh? Yeah. Dude, we were starting to get me and Gabe, like Gabe was younger. Gabe was like eight or something and getting the same deal, you know? So you guys are just out there stacking Stack. paper age 10. Yeah. You didn't gamble it away, though. You saved it, you said. Yeah, we put it in the bank for sure. I would have went duffel bag, Mom yeah. helped filled us out with, with dough, that. walking around the streets with mm-hmm. it flaunting it. Yeah, maybe secure. I mean, the bag. I was hitting like McD's and stuff in high school, kind of flexing the card, but <laughs> nothing crazy, you know. Flexing the card. Yeah. I didn't have a card when I was ten. I don't. I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, not ten years old. <laughs> that was more high school days. Well, I think it's interesting to think about a lot of kids with first fame, kind of turn into douches. That's true. Douche huh? flutes because you get you get this flutes. like you're kind of put on a pedestal at a young age. You maybe get a sense of entitlement because you, and, and you just seem like you've always been cool. Um, you never let that get to your head. Uh, what do you think the the reason is for that? 
I mean, I was always surrounded by so many other good snowboarders. Like, growing up at Mount Bachelor, we had, like, the Warbington brothers. We had Garrett. I don't know if you guys remember Ben Watts, but that kid yep. was crazy. We had, like, a crazy good crew of snowboarders that we grew up shredding with. And, I mean, that's what kind of made me who I am at a young age. Like, that's what pushed me towards doing well in contests and getting those contracts. But I think just being around so many other good snowboarders, it's, like, hard to get cocky and, you know think too highly of yourself yeah they'll shut you down quick huh, if you start acting like a, a douche yeah for sure good people keep you grounded having a brother probably helps too yeah what's your family dynamic because you you got a few bros right yeah i got a couple of brothers got gabe which you guys know and then we got z ferg and he's in between us and he shreds too now who's who's throwing down the most beat downs when you guys squabble that's what i want to <laughs> know uh, I mean, I was big brother for quite a while. I had my days as top dog, and those days are well over now. <laughs> Zferg will kick the shit out of me, one hundred percent. Zferg is there to restore. Zferg, he to will restore order. Yeah, he'll lift me up over his head and toss my ass for sure. He shreds too. Yeah, he shreds. Is he, he rips. He rips, but is he like uh, he's not bummed that he's not sponsored like you guys? I don't think he cares. Like he was yeah. never like that competitive. Like uh, we, he did all the contests and stuff, and like. He loves snowboarding, but he just didn't care about contests and shit. Mm. So my dad's like, well, you should probably just start going to school. And he did that, and he shreds on the weekends and when he can, and he rips, and he's so, hyped. I was so. curious. Uh, I heard some information. I got some intel that said that um, you had a really bad method as a kid. Is that true? <laughs> I might have, for wow. sure. I think I had pretty bad ste as a kid <laughs> in general. Well, we're going to get into a guest question from none other than <laughs> Aaron Blatt. Here we go. Uh-oh. Yo, Aaron Blatt here. Got a question for the man in the chair, Van Ferguson. Everyone's seen the method a thousand times now in the pipe, the backcountry, Natty Select. We got to know how it's done. Everyone wants to feel that. Walk us through how you kick it out like that, my friend. Thank you. All right. That's a good question. Um, I think it's all in the setup. And James Jackson actually taught me this. We were at uh, we were actually at Park City. Um. But it's set up, I think. You come in kind of like you're trying to do a back three. You come in on your heels, and then you switch to toes right off the top of the lip. And then, like, that switch of the edge kind of makes it easier to push out that uh, tail when you get into the method. And then if you get it high enough, then it just kind of whips down by itself. You go outside or inside the binding? Mm, I, started, I started going inside the binding, and then after, like, I don't know, I really like Terrier's method and... Mueller's method back in the day so then I started doing those it's harder to do like a really good looking inside the binding method it seems like your early ones you'd hold melon almost and then kick it yeah for sure which is dope I love those those are my favorite I gotta start like mixing it up more kind of lazy almost in front of the binding you can like tweak it harder and like it's a little easier to like get that full extension you pop off your heels toes flat base (laughs) Like full toes, like you're doing a back three almost. Toes and then like your tail for sure. And wing it out there. No, is it true you heard that he had a bad method when he was Spe- young? Uh, that was Spencer Schubert. Because, you know, I, just for the listeners, he's known to have a great method. You're one of uh, the best. One of the best. In the game. Uh, had a l- number of covers, I'd imagine, with that thing. And some real money maker for you. And uh, yeah, beat I just the shit out of that thing. I probably <laughs> got to change it up a little bit. <laughs> He's been beating that dead horse for years and just cashing checks since he was 10 with that thing. But I just like to know, I just, it was great to know that you had a bad method as a kid. It made me a little bit, well, you know, I there's some if hope for us. Probably was him a, to get such a good one as he had a bad one and he, someone said something to him and then he stepped it up. Probably was a bit of a Tina back in the day. I think back in the day, it's just like a little kid kind of going through the motions, you know? Yeah, you just didn't really it. like. I was just kind of thrown into it and then didn't really start caring about it till a little later. Yeah. You know, then I started watching more videos and started caring more about what, like how snowboarding actually looked. The, that makes yeah. sense. I'm curious because you grew up riding with James Jackson, who is one of the best coaches in the world. He, uh, he's Scotty James coach currently, and he's been on our show. we has got a great episode if you're interested, any listeners, but uh, how do you feel about coaching? How was your experience being coached as a kid? So James is like style. Like when we were younger, um, he we would just go shred. It wasn't like technical coaching, really. We would like if it was snowing, we'd go ride pow, and you just mash through the trees and follow him. Like try to be as fast as you could. And then if it was like good in the park, we'd go ride the park too. But it wasn't really like anything too intense, you know. It was more just like getting out there every day with someone who knew the mountain and who knew how to snowboard. 
and would like push you in the right direction, but never really like get intense about telling you what to do. But the first trip I went on James, like he fully broke down my like my technique. Like I was pretty squatty. He like fully like would yell at me like riding down after me. That was like our first trip. And then after that, it was like just shredding. What was he? No, what was it like he dissecting particularly? I think mainly like I would, I was a little front foot heavy and he just taught me like, you got to be Spider-Man on the board. Like you want your knees bent, you want to be low, you want to be aggressive, like use those edges. And that like really instilled all that into my riding. Wow. That makes so much sense watching him ride right now. Cause yeah. that's the thing that kind of sticks out. You know, I'm going to kiss a little bit of ass here, but I think for the listeners that need to understand what makes you such a great snowboard is a lot of snowboards are great acrobatically you get them off the jump and they can flip their bodies in all different types of directions. But for you, the intricacies you're riding are almost in between the jumps or when you're riding lines, your ability to carve and turn. And it's so cool because that's what I see when I watch you ride that, that deep, deep board control that you have. And it's, it's just really interesting to hear that it came from James Jackson. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, he definitely like pushed me into that direction hard for sure. And then I took it and like, loved it because that shit was fun dude like we would go to copper before these half pipe contests and it's just that one like big strip of snow down before the half pipe and we're on these snowboards that are just like tuned so nicely the mcdermott i don't know if you know Ryan oh McDermott. yeah oh, big old air horn <laughs> but the things are like straight rocket ships you know and the edges are pristine so you're not jibbing at all so i would straight just turn the jibs into like gates or whatever and just like use the edges and go as fast as i could and Really, like, figured out a lot of, like, board control, just ripping the resort on, like, an amazing board. Who who are your big inspirations as a kid that you looked up to? Man, it, like, definitely changed, like, throughout the years. Like, I remember at first, like, really being hyped on, like, Danny Davis and Mickle and, like, Mason Aguirre and those, like, contest dudes. And then it kind of flowed more into, like, uh, man, definitely, like, Terrier. Like, I started watching... Terrier ride back in the day and like his style like I really wanted to ride like Terrier like I would think about that electric grapevine song or I'd play that electric grapevine song when I rode and like just try to be Terrier on the way down um and then definitely like Mueller a bunch of people though you know there's so many good snowboarders like you just kind of take stuff from other people but yeah we're going to do a Patreon question. And first, I would like to say thank you to all the Patreon members. Thank you for your support and being part of the family. We really appreciate you guys. Appreciate. Appreach. Preach. We appreciate you. We this, preach you. This is from Ben Wisner. As a young rider, I watched you grow up competing. Can you speak to why you competed? Yeah, I mean, that was just kind of what you did back in the day as a kid. Like, you did all the contests for sure. And then if you got a little bit of success in that, you, like, kept doing it. Um, but also like just, just a shred, I guess, like always loved competing, but also always did other stuff as well. And I think competing was kind of a means to get to a certain spot, but also like when you do do really well in a contest, it is an amazing feeling. Um, especially after like, you know, sometimes you fall, sometimes you fall both runs and that stuff sucks. Like it's not a good feeling and to finally land a run that you're stoked on in a contest is definitely an amazing feeling. And that's like kind of what drives you to keep competing. I think, especially if you're not winning every time, like if you're not addicted to the winning, I think it's more about like just the feeling you get from stomping something and all that pressure built up and then it releases. And then at the end you're all good. It's crazy. Did you, uh, did Burton sponsor you before you were competing or they saw you in competition? No. So like, I was pretty young. I was like eight years old. It was a whole batchy crew. Warbingtons, Warnick, Schubert, all those heads. We would do the local contest scene up at Mount Bachelor and then go to nationals every year. That was like the goal. Like if you made it to nationals, you were like, hell fuck yeah. Like I made it to nationals. And the first year I made it to nationals, I ended up doing pretty good. I got like second in the half pipe and then won the slope style event. And then made a little sponsor me tape and gave it to James Jackson. And I think he sent it over to like Chaka at Burton. And then like that summer I went out and there was like this big tryout for like the smalls team. There was a bunch of heads, like a bunch of kids. And then after that just started getting gear and eventually got a contract. 
Nice. I was like 10. Made it through the tryouts. Signing yeah. Connie's at 10. Yeah. Dude, the tryouts were kind of crazy. Who it was, was in the like mix? Yeah, who was there? Chopping block shit. You know Max Raymer? He lives here. I think yep. he runs Milo. Yep. He was up in there. So what was up with the oh, tryouts? Yeah. How, how were they gnarly? How so? I mean, it was just like a bunch of us kids like going up to the resort and hanging out up at Mount Hood and like eating candy in government camp and cobra dogs or whatever and being kids. And then like the next trip, there was just like... Not as many kids. Oh, it's like that. <laughs> so they invite a bunch of you up and like pay for y'all to go there. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly. And then you do another trip and it's half shopping half block. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. But that was back when like Hans and Nils were on the team too, and those dudes were like the OGs. They had been on for a while, and those kids and Kyle Mag. So it was crazy for sure. Did you realize at the young age that it was chopping block style and you had to be on your game, or did you not even really I realize it? I didn't really even realize it, and then I think. My dad like heard from one of the other dads, and then yeah, I don't know. I thought it was later though. Yeah, all of a sudden like after, and then we were like hoping that I get on the next trip. I guess. Yeah, all of a sudden a dad calls a dad and is like, "Little Timmy didn't get invited." Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of dad, it can get ugly. We got a guest question from your dad. Uh oh. Here we go. Hey, what's up, bomb hole guys? <laughs> hey Ben. He loves the show. Who's your dad? Hey, you remember that time you were coming home from Austria? After the Youth Olympics, I think you were probably around 16. Uh, you had a bunch of friends and family at the airport. Everyone was kind of excited to see you. We had signs. Things had gone pretty good. And you come walking off the plane and your face is all messed up. You got scratches on your arms. Your knuckles are all bruised. Just wondering if you remember what happened there. All right, Pops. Um, yeah, so went to, uh, that's a funny question. He would ask that. He likes scrapping. <laughs> um, yeah, so went on the, went to the youth Olympics back in the day. I was probably like 16, 17. And in Austria, I think you can drink from a pretty young age. Like I think 16 yeah, is maybe the drink drinking age. Yeah, you can drink beer at yeah. 16, but not alcohol till 21. And there's like wine in between. It's like a whole schedule. Yeah. So we were there and we're like hyped because we could go to the bars and stuff and, uh, we went to a bar one night. It was like the last night of the whole trip. The contest went pretty well, so we're just like having fun. Um, and I don't know, it's just some like Innsbruck homies started tailing us and throwing snowballs at us. So we, I started throwing snowballs back. Max Raymer was actually with me for this. And uh, I don't know, eventually like one of them ran up to me. Kid was pretty gnarly looking, had like rings in his faces and stuff. And he was yelling at me in Austria and I didn't know what the hell he was saying. And he just socked me in the side of the face. And we got in a big scrap for sure. And there was like four of them and I think there was like three of us. And they were kind of just beating the shit out of us, I think. Like <laughs> I got in a couple, I got in a couple good ones for sure. Like I put some kids down, I head butted a dude. What? Respect. <laughs> yeah, respect the head Much butt. Respect First head on butt. That. <laughs> there's, it there's no just winner happened, with the dude. headbutt. <laughs> it kind of just happened. Yeah, there's definitely no winner. <laughs> That's so sick. You went for the headbutt, but dude. He had like hit me so hard in the side of the face that I was just like full. Your head was numb. Yeah, I was just woozing. Yeah. You know, kind of bipping around, and he had me by the front of the shirt, and he's yelling stuff in Austrian to me. And I don't know what the hell he's saying. So then I just grabbed the back of his head and put my forehead into his nose. <laughs> Wow. And then it kind of put him down, and then, like, security came and split us all up. But that was, like, one of my first and only, like, real scraps. Little squab on site is what that is. Little squab. Fun fact. But he would ask that question. In Austria, they speak German. They speak German. There's no Austrian. Are you sure it's not, like, an Austrian dialect? It's, they speak German. It was like a, it's like an Austrian German, isn't it? It's like some whatever, I don't know, whatever maybe they're not. saying. Let me tell you something. They, I couldn't they, understand they it. German. They sound angry, even if they're yeah. saying like, "Hey, yeah. how you doing?" They're yeah, they probably, <laughs> they probably weren't even saying yeah, you're anything. Like, you're mean. like, "Whoa, man, <laughs> yeah, take it easy." They're probably you're just like, telling me to calm down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard. I, I remember being on a trip with uh, Vole Nivel, and he was like on the phone. He's like, "Scheißen Glocken, Siegen Glocken," and I'm like, "Is everything okay?" Is everything okay? He's like, "Yeah, I just got off the phone with my wife. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> like, we're just having a chat." And I'm like, "Oh, okay, all right." Yeah, it's, it's confusing. Have a violent language escalates a casual. How did it go with the headbutt? Yeah, how did they, how, how was that received? How was that received on your end? <laughs> I had a big fucking raspberry <laughs> ride on my forehead, like like he said, like walking off of the plane. There's like a bunch of people there, all excited, and I just look in bruised up Mauled. like super dinged up it put a big old raspberry right on my forehead looking like a, a rhino 
<laughs> did he? Uh, did you? Did he get him good though? Was he like? It messed him up. It doubled him over. It's and then we got like, split up. When someone headbutts you, man, that's like yeah. wow. I'm so how the how the junior Olympics go? I went well. I did. I was just in. Actually, I did slope style too. I won the half pipe. Woo! That was like the start of the like actually doing good in half pipe contest for me. Um, yeah, that was when I got. I was like on the U.S. team. And started, like, actually figuring out tricks to that could compete with, like, some of the bigger dogs. So, question, halfpipe. You were a competitive halfpipe rider for a long time. A lot of people know you as the backcountry beefer, but you were you were you ditch beefer for a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why did you choose the halfpipe? Man, it was not so much of a, like, choice at the time. It was kind of more just, like, this is the route you should go, like, did both like loved riding slope style wish i still like continued to ride slope style honestly at that young of an age but it was kind of getting to that era in competitive snowboarding where you had to kind of pick and at the time slope style wasn't in the olympics and i was getting put on the u.s team and the u.s team's like well if you're going to be on the u.s team like you got to ride some half pipe um and the u.s team was definitely like very beneficial thing to be on like the coaching was really good. It was, like, lots of good support. Like, they had scholarships for, like, college. So that was always, like, get on the team, and then, like, you can at least go to college and go from there. Now, I, I want to talk about edge control with the half pipe because you have some of the best edge control in the biz. Why does the uh, half pipe kind of hone those skills in so strongly? You just got to commit to those edges in the half pipe. Like, if you watch a Yumu ride... He's a psychopath, dude. Like, he's straight on edge the whole time, never break an edge. Like, anytime you see someone speed check, that's straight up, like, that's just you being a little bitch, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if you if you drop in and you just, like, lock into that edge and just tell yourself you're not going to speed check and just keep your legs strong and stay in that good stance, like, you're going to go absolutely massive out of that thing. And you can do it. It's just terrifying. But, like, watch a Yumu ride or, like, even his brother, Kaishu, I rode with that kid at that indoor half pipe. That was insane. That kid's insane. He's going to be so dope. He's going to do like backcountry stuff too, I think, as well. But yeah, man, you just got to commit to those edges. The thing that's wild about watching Ayumu and the really good dogs too is they land at the very top of the transition. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It's wild. And that's another thing where it's just like balls, basically. Like you just keep your leg. If it's a good half pipe, like you don't have to pop. You don't have to pop. You don't have to absorb. You just like, you keep those legs strong and you ride right through the lip, you're going to land at the top. But you get scared because you don't want to deck, so you pop every once in a while, and then that's when you start landing flat and losing speed. So, like, watching somebody, like you said, a Yumu, go insanely fast and then land back at the top is, like, mind-blowing. That's, like, perfect half-pipe riding. Another wild thing, thinking about your half-pipe run back in the day, like, especially when you got bronze at X, I was watching that run, and you kind of do, like, an alley-oop back 180 into the pipe. Right into the cab ten, yeah, double, and then uh, and then you do front double crip, yep, back three, and then the one of the craziest things for people that don't understand is this, the switch McTwist, a switch heel side carve in the half pipe is like the hardest thing in the fucking world. Mm-hmm. Switch Mickey and then switch double back back flip and then into the heel side carve where you'd lay lay into it, yeah. Yeah, it was always nice if you could hit that last little carve there. Because a lot of people just pull out at the end, you know? But it's nice to use the whole walls, I think. Makes it cool. Buds knows a little bit about that switch McTwist. Yeah, though, I wonder right? who's got a better one, me or... <laughs> 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 we found documentation of the switch mic. Did you see that? I, I think maybe. I don't it's know. It's real. We're gonna Bud, pull it up, though. Buds pulled up uh, a like photo. He, he had a He had a Tech 9 ad doing a switch alley Mickey. And yeah, he's, you I know, saw the photo on the gram. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's fucked. We don't have video yet, so we know that there is documentation of photo, but he grabbed switch melon, which is the most fucked grab ever. Dude, that's awesome. I like McTwist with not, like, I, the chicken wing is awesome, but I think it's pretty sick if you can do, like, I don't know. I always thought Terrier's McTwist was dope, and he's yeah. not cranking it back, but he's giving it, like, a nice poke. He has a dope one. But switch melon's pretty insane. Yeah. Really kind of hard to do with that one. Dude, your broski served up that switch there, that double Michael Chuck. Oh, is that, yeah. a, that was a Chuck or a Mickey? That was a double Chuck. Double Chuck. Yeah, but chuck. it was a weird axis. It looked really cool. Yeah, he's got a nice dub Chuck. Yeah. Yeah, and he gets it kind of with the, the indie, indie and pokes a back leg. That's a good look. Keir Dillon used to do Mickey indies, too. Keir, Keir rolls. Sick, sick yeah, one the KD, the, the big KD. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are sick. Nobody grabs nose or tail, really. 
That seems hard. Somebody oh, Bodie grabs yeah, nose. Yeah, Bodie, he's so Bodie, tall. He does nose. I think Trevor maybe used to back in the day, too. Yeah. Andrews. Yeah, yeah I think wrong. you're right. It's cool when you watch old footage, you see some people doing stale fish or... Dude, when you have long arms, them. though, you can just grab anything like Bodie. Yeah, for sure. He's snagging those. Just snag it whenever he wants. Yeah. I could hardly ever reach reach a nose or a tail. It, or a nose, anyways. I'm pretty stubby myself. <laughs> Uh, lucky to just get a grab these days. But the one thing <laughs> I like, Jeez, I like I the uh, heel. The the one thing I wanted to like kind of harp on is in your run, that heel side carve at the end is like just as impressive as the cab ten in my opinion. Because like <laughs> I don't think there's too many other people in the contest that can wail a heel side like that. Yeah, I don't know. That was just like that came from just like shredding the resort, like riding the half pipe down or riding the run down to the half pipe like a copper, just like using every bit of that run to like try to turn and like. Instead of just going straight down to the half pipe, you would like fuck around. That's your but roots yeah. at Bachelor, huh? Just because you guys are always traversing around everywhere, huh? Yeah, so for it sure. Gets you on edge, definitely and ready. helps. Yeah. Now I have a question: Like, what's the deal, dude? You fucking you ride half pipe, you ride backcountry. You know, you can rip bank slaloms, and ride lines, cheese Hard wedges, jumps, hips. But why? No rails, man. What the fuck, <laughs> dude? Actually, I was kind of jibbing down in New Zealand. Oh, are you jibbing? <laughs> yeah, I was working on. I got the. I'm feeling pretty good with the front board now. The what about hitting? street rails? Yeah. I've never hit a street rail. Never. Uh, maybe way back in the day we kind of set one up in Bend, but I don't even think I. If really you ever tried. need to reinvent yourself, Dude, honestly, you should dive into it. Just yeah, a sick. street, a street career. Get him on a Quebec trip, <laughs> Dude, or something. I could figure out some board slides on maybe something kind of gnarly, some and then hit, hit some hand plants on some wall rides, and maybe maybe a front board in there. Yeah, you could be jumping around. I'm not the opposed city, no to problem. it, but. I just, like, honestly, like, was never into them as a kid. Like, I remember eating shit on them super hard and not being that down. And then and then I kind of started figuring them out a little bit. And then, like, U.S. team, half-pipe style, and you're on the McDermott, and the edges are insane, and they'll, like, straight yell at you if you hit any rails. Samurai uh, sword. You got a yeah, samurai you're sword Yeah, messing edge. with their equipment or your yeah. equipment that they take care of. Yeah, because then they got to come in later and fix that shit all I up. think these guys like Ferg realize quick, too, there's no money in the streets. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dude, uh, that's not why, honestly. I, I did not think about that. You don't see any of those contest dudes <laughs> heading, heading back to the streets after. You don't got Bob Costas at the bottom of the down bar yeah. ready to interview you. With, with, with some pink eye. Yeah, <laughs> eye leaking all over the place out there. <laughs> You don't want them out Poo there. particles in the <laughs> eye. It's just cold and lonely in those streets. <laughs> What's Costas been doing? <laughs> yeah, where's Costas? Okay, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about the style experience, buds. Canada Snowboard is revolutionizing the big air game with their newest event, the style experience, with an integrated style contest component that is the perfect combination of progressive and timeless tricks, Chris. Yep. That one is going to keep the revs high, buds. Watch the best snowboarders in the world chuck carcass at the largest big air contest Canada has ever seen in the winter stronghold of Edmonton, Alberta. It's going down in the Commonwealth Stadium, boasting VIP suite options, private bars, heated tents, a vendor village, and more. Fire this one up on the evening of December 10th, Canada. The style experience is made possible through the partnership between Canada Snowboard and Explore Edmonton presented by Toyota. Get on your most stylish winter gear and secure a spot at the winter event of the year on Ticketmaster. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about Sunbum. Remember, guys, you can still get roasted by the sun in the winter. You don't want to be out there looking like a Kenny Rogers roasted chicken. You want to be looking good. I use the mineral stick. I keep it in my pocket. It's a great little thing to keep in your pack, in your truck. Again, you want to stay safe from the sun. Support the companies that support us. Sunbomb's a great company. They got good people working in there in our industry. They got Brian Fox, Jill Perkins on the team. Uh, if you want to pick some up, head on over to your local skate or surf shop or snowboard shop. If they don't have that, you can head on over to sunbum.com. Use promo code BOMBHOLE for 15% off. Again, sunbomb.com, promo code BOMBHOLE, 15% off. Get yourself some screen. You need to use Sunbum because you don't want to be out there looking like Todd Richards. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Richards. Okay. A little Leather roast face. of Richards. Love it. 
Well, uh, I was thinking, should we whack a sniffer? Ooh. Have you ever had a sniffer. smelling salt? I never have. I'd like to plug uh, <laughs> Run Through a Wall Smelling Salts available at bombhole.com while supplies last. Here, pop one of these. Right. Zferg says he hits these before rugby. Oh, he games, does. Actually. Really? Zferg's a rugby dog. No wonder he beats the shit out of you guys. Oh yeah. So you just <laughs> squeeze <laughs> the middle; it'll turn red. Okay. And then just give it, ease it up to your nose. You don't need to go full. That was a good one. That was <laughs> a good one. He, he got in there. Oh my god. Oh. 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 You hit it again, or is oh, it like yeah, a hit one it again. No, it's good. Oh. Oh, his eyes are watering. All right, we're ready to do this. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Holy. Use promo code ZFERG for 0% off bombhole.com. <laughs> okay, here we go. Um, let's get into the current state of contest. So you grew up competing. Um, you know, you seem to be leaning more in the style uh, department. A lot of people are acrobatic. How do you, how do you feel about the current state of contest? Um, I think it's insane. The kids are doing crazy Your stuff eyes are still days. watering. <laughs> Dude, those things got me. You this got deep. me. I might have to crack this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, crack this a pub, this pub beer. Um, dude, they're doing crazy stuff. They're actually like going psycho out there. It's hard to like fathom or like even put yourself in their situation because even like when I was doing it, like the stuff that we had to do, like that was scary. That was gnarly. And then now, like especially in half pipe, like you got to be doing fourteens or even bigger. Even I don't really know, but it's nuts. And then slope styles is full. Just like those kids are all going nuts. The it's height. hard to like. Wa- uh, it's hard to like uh, comprehend a little bit, like just the amount of spins and the tricks that they're doing. Like it's hard to put yourself in their shoes a little bit, but it's mad entertaining for sure. To me, in the half pipe, the height that some of these guys are getting so dangerous. Yeah, it's just incredible to watch too. Oh yeah, yeah. Kaishu and Ayumu are going massive, and that's so that's like big. what you want to see. Yeah. yeah like well, what do you like? Pipe. What do you like watching in the current contest scene? Um, I love watching Kai Shu. He's the shit. Is he the dude who went the super big air? Yeah, he did that massive world record. Massive yeah, the, world record like method. The biggest air. Yeah. That was so nice. That was awesome. Um, he's just nice with the edges too and landing at the top and everything. So is his brother. Um I actually Taylor Gold's a homie of mine and he's really his fun run's to watch. Sick. Yeah, yeah, he's super creative, does cool stuff that not everybody does. The double um, chuck late one eighty, whatever that's called. Yeah, that's nuts. Like just hanging the heels out there. Right above the deck, that could go very wrong. Um, and then I actually like Jan Share too in the half pipe. He's dope, and he was always pretty chill. I liked hanging with him back in the day. Now I'm curious, going back to your con- contest days. I guess you still have it with natural selection and stuff, but you know when you're you're in those big contests, ex- you know you're traveling, doing the circuit, Grand Prix, Mountain or Mountain Dew Tour, Dew Tour. Um, all of them, X Games. How do you deal with the pressure? How's how's that at the top? The nerves. What's your technique, dude? I just try to chill, cause I get overamped straight up. Like if I'm gonna bet, like mess up, it's cause I'm like so adrenaline, like amped up, and like ah, that I'm gonna like blow myself up if I don't just like try and keep it calm. But you use that adrenaline too. It's the shit. Like like I was saying, like going into a, the first hit. Not speed checking. That's when that adrenaline like works. You're like, I'm doing it. And you got a crowd and you're on national TV and you're mm-hmm. fired up. Dude, the crowd's awesome. You hear them under there. Like it doesn't really affect you, but you kind of hear them and it just adds it a little bit. You get a little more juiced every hit. You going headphones on them? Yeah, I definitely ran headphones. What are we, what but are we I, slapping? I what are only we hit one. In there? What are you listening to? For a while, like one year, I was doing pretty good this year too. I would only hit Stranglehold by Ted Nugent. Every <laughs> run. <dude. laughs> Dude, every it, run. Every Ted run. Nugent. It was wow. the sickest. Every run like, all uh, season. There's a sickest hype up song. It's got that like slow build, like a dan it, nan it, nan it, nan it. And then it like pops off. And yeah, I don't know. That's so good and to you know you that do one, it. That every one got run. me juiced. Not like every run, but like every, Natty every contest run. Natty Select, no headphones. Just seems kind of like a pain in the ass. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Ted Nugent. Ted now, Nugent. I have a question. You're working with. Oh, it still gets me fired up. Yeah, it's a heater. You're working with. James Jackson was he saying any met, like Jedi mind tricks? Was he Miyagi in you at the top of the run? Yeah, for sure. He would try to anyway, and I would just be such a ball of nerves that it wouldn't really work. But <laughs> what kind of stuff? Is what he kind whispering? of Miyagi action? What's he whispering in the ear? I remember one time at X Games, I was like, you could, he could probably tell I was tripping. I was like walking around and really like wasn't focused on anything, you know. Definitely wasn't like calm. And he was like, I've seen you try to push that pole door open like five times in a row now. See if you can just hit it the right way next time like to like reel it in tune in a little bit 
just stuff like that. There's there's a door you're opening. Yeah, so like there's a little warming hut at the bottom of the X Games half pipe or top of the X Games half pipe below the scaffolding, and yeah, I like kept like trying to push it open, and it was definitely like a pull. And, and did I did it, it like three or four times, and he was like, so "You're frazzled." You can, I was frazzled. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Because you start thinking about like I don't know, you get in your head. You know, it's just like anything kind of start getting in your head, and then it all kind of crumbles. You want to go hollow head on him. Yeah. And you want to go lights on, nobody's home, dude. Not thinking is like a good skill to have. For sure. So at times. Uh, so I'm curious also. So you were filming, you know, early days. You got a bunch of clips in fourth phase. And then, you know, Joy and Hail Mary, you, you were doing the full contest circuit while also filming. Uh, what are your thoughts on that approach? Um, yeah, so for like a couple of years, I would like film little video parts and compete the whole time. And it was kind of awesome because you would get like... You were snowboarding so much because you're going to these resorts and you're like riding park and riding the half pipe. So I'm on my snowboard a ton. And then any chance I get, like take the opportunity and go out. And like I was super lucky to be able to go out with like a bunch of really good people that knew what they were doing who were like took really good care of me. I'm like super thankful for everybody who did that for me. Um, But it was kind of sick because I snowboarded so much and I was like still young and like had all that energy and like the tricks from riding park jumps all the time. So it kind of just like plug and played, like worked out pretty well. Like definitely was a rookie, like definitely needed to learn some stuff and like didn't know where to go, like didn't know the zones, had to figure out like the way mountains worked, but it was pretty awesome back in the day. I had fun. It's funny thinking about contests, guys or girls going to the backcountry versus like guys that film video parts all years long because it's like, you know, a lot of times video part people might do, you know, that trick once only for a video part like one 1080 or one 900 or you know the only time they're doing it is when they're hitting and it's like you guys are just on a conveyor belt you're like yeah i've done i've done like 70 1080s this year on jumps like i think i got it on the wedge for sure dude that's how it like is for like that's not how it is for me anymore like i don't ride park enough and i don't like get to ride the resort enough i mean i get to but Spend a lot of time just, like, getting yourself to the zone and, like, figuring everything out. And, like, it's a lot of work. And you your snowboarding does kind of take, like, a, a back step to the actual process of filming. Um, Was it hard making that yeah. change from contest into it, getting into the backcountry and stuff? No, nah, because I love it. It's so sick. I had, like, down with all of it, like, waking up early, getting to the lots all muddy and cold and... You, like, make your breakfast out there. We always make these, like, little breakfast sandwiches and shove them in our sleds, and they warm up on the way out. And then you eat your breakfast out there, and it's beautiful. And you're with your homies. So you're just kind of bullshit and hanging. It's the best. It's also cool to think that you had bachelor roots. So you grew up, you know, you said with James Jackson on Powder Days, you're, you're ripping the mountain, whereas mm-hmm. a lot of the contest kids that come up either don't have powder access or just, are training you know so it probably seems like an easier transition for you because you have the batchy roots yeah it's pretty natural because we were always just like excuse me pub beer burp pub but, um, beer. yeah like if it snowed we were shredding the resort we weren't like grinding into the park so it was a natural transition and then when i was pretty young like i'm gonna drop alport um yep kind of a local legend in bed he started taking me out <clears throat> probably like when i was like 13 or something and we would go build kickers and Tool around on the local mountains and up at Bachelor. I got a Patreon question about Bachelor. This is from David Biddle. He wants to know what's your favorite run on Bachelor. Man, favorite run? There's so many good ones, but this is like a classic. Kind of depends on the chair, but I would say there's some sneaky runs on Skyliner where you can find like a natty hit, like almost. Th- there's like six the whole way down. It's just like one big run with a bunch of different hits on it. So Skyliner. Go, go find that one on Skyliner. Do you call starts with starts with Gilligan's and then it goes from there. And I'm not going to let you're not going to give all the out. full intel. Yeah, there's all some right. there's starts some uh, batchy, batchy looks that aren't happy that this intel group <laughs> divulged. Uh, Do you call them wall hits? It's going to be crowded up there. Huh? Wall hits or side hits? That's, I've a, that's a hard hitting question. I've always called it side hits, but I guess it depends on like like a side hit. I guess it's just the side of the run for sure, right? But a wall hit is maybe more of like a like a half pipe hit, like if it's more of a transition hit. I don't really know. 
I haven't honestly really heard the term wall hit that much. We've had some some uh, people come out of the woodwork that are really angry about the term side hit. Yeah. I don't know. Like who? Like some. Who was bringing it up? I just remember reading some comments. I can't remember who it was. Yeah. I think it just depends at the resort and how they're set up. Because, like, you know how Snowbird, it snakes around on a cat track, and they're literally kind of like walls. Yeah, like Mount Hood Meadows has that, too. Yeah. They're big, like, quarter pipe hits. Kind of yeah. And in the East Coast, too, on some cat tracks, on, like, flatter, I don't know, it, it seems like it's more of a wall scenario. Yeah, I guess maybe we need to specify. We need to figure this out. Yeah, maybe it's two different things, really. Yeah. We'll have to do some investigating and see what's Because technically, at. side hit would just be a... A hit on the side hit of the run. Hit on the side right? of the run, yeah. yeah. We're going to get into another guest question. This one's from your mom. Here we go. Okay. Hey there. Hi, everyone. Um, hey, Benny boy. Oh, this no. is your mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was just thinking about how much you have always really loved to snowboard over everything else. When you were little, I once suggested we skip the early morning drive to the mountain for pancakes and cartoons, and you got so mad at me. So, do you remember... How I thought a cat or something was sneaking into our garage and peeing in oh your boots. God. Yours and your brothers. And uh, you, you want to explain that? Okay, love you. Yeah, thanks, mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> Buds has that issue. There's a lot of cat piss and a lot of items he owns. But yeah, continue. Sorry. Bullshit. Okay, so <laughs> back to the like the old school batchy days when we were romping with like all those heads: Warbingtons, Schubert, Ortega. Watts. Um, we would just like mash around the resort, and if you stopped to take a piss, you would get fully left behind. So, kind of would just start leaking into the like you were always you holding were just it, your pants. dude. <laughs> straight <laughs> right pissing pants, your straight pissing pants. Like, did not want to stop. Would just like hold it as long as you could. And then, like, eventually, maybe every once in a while you get it out, you know. But a lot of the time, dude, you're like, ah, oh, fuck it, here it comes. And then you're soggy and it gets into your boots and shit. Dude, dude. It's, it's not a good feeling, but you would just run it for the rest of the day. You're like a little kid, didn't really care that much. Why bad. not just whip and it then out for and sure, pee as you're going? You were dude, gonna I don't miss know. It's act, like two you take, you're like a little kid. You got to like take the glove oh, yeah, off yeah, yeah, and okay. like everyone's mobbing. You get left. Like you didn't want to get left by the squad. And the squad the, was peeing the pants too. Was Gabe, I think was everybody Gabe was kind of pissing their pants. Like I think it was like a recurring thing throughout. Wow. The, Amazing. I mean, Chris, you ever done that? Uh, I've never intentionally urinated in my pants unless it's like to go in the ocean as a joke, yeah. you know, before you go swimming. But other than that, no. I mean, it wasn't intentional. Oh, it wasn't intentional. No, I was just like couldn't hold it anymore. Like didn't want to stop. Wow. Yeah, but it's intentional because you chose to not stop. I guess. Pee. Yeah. So you just eventually were like, eh, let it go. Have you have you tried it in adulthood just to kind of bring it back to your roots? No, should I do it right now? <laughs> <laughs> dude. D don't want to stop talking. <laughs> you guys should have just went we, campers, dude. <laughs> yeah, we should do that in the booth, but well, so we okay, don't have to get so up and take then pee breaks. My parents fully thought that there was like some cat like Peeing in the booth. sneaking into the garage and like going after the boots, <laughs> like specifically. <laughs> the cat like, only pees What in is the going boots? on? We need to find this cat. <laughs> Whose cat is this? How's it get in? Well, Bud's has some experience with some cat urine. What has the cat been urinating on? There's a couple items. Dude, there was, I have an issue. It was an old cat, and it would actually pee on my travel bags. <laughs> it didn't and, want you to leave. Yeah, it didn't want me to leave, and it would pee, not in them, but on the outside of them. And I'd get on a trip, and you're in your hotel room, and you're just like, damn, dude, what is that? It's cat piss. We also have the light reflector thing here. Oh, yeah. You're like, sorry, uh, it's my cat piss. <laughs> <on that." laughs> uh, in the garage, certain things. Maybe it was just me peeing on stuff. <laughs> yeah, he's he's just claiming it's the it, cat. I was saying it was the cat. Was, I was peeing on my bags and the light reflector. <laughs> and sleepwalking. Yeah. I just had a cat that liked to pee on things in the garage, I guess. So that that sounds like, I mean, look at yeah. Ben's th story. It's kind my of parents had the same problem. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you guys would just pee right in your boots or in your on yourselves and I know, it's just because you wouldn't stop. God, it's a terrible feeling too. It's cold out, like it's warm at first. Well, at you first you're cold. like, "This it's is disgusting. great," and then I'm sure you're really bummed after oh, yeah. like 20 minutes. Oh yeah, it's not good. Let's dive into that's incredible. Let's dive into uh, your part in Joy because I think that that was like a huge, you know, breakout part. Mm -hmm. um, I know we have a bunch of other contest stuff we can get back into, but 
that one you really seemed like that's where you found your sea legs out there and um, sea legs how was how was the experience filmed for that and i have a couple of specific tricks i want you to talk about is the the double crippler on the natty kind of wind lip that yep. was an incredible kind of combination of half pipe skills going to the back country yeah. and then the front 10 over the ravine gap and then the second to last clip just carving that face those are my three favorite clips all right cool yeah filming for joy was awesome honestly i had so much fun that year that was like the first year that i actually like i did one contest i did x games and i really didn't try like hadn't ridden any half pipe so that was the first year that i really put you know all my effort into filming for a snowboard movie and we had an awesome crew um it's with the colonel sage colonel k colonel k colonel katzenberg and he was like so motivated that year too and that like it really like pushed all of us and like made us show up and we're with tyler orton too and he's been my longtime homie and then gabe came on a couple trips and we had red and brock involved as well um so it was just an awesome crew sage taught me a lot sage worked as like we worked our asses off and sage was like straight captain that year so i learned a lot from sage and that was dope yeah man it was it was pretty sweet and I, like i hadn't filmed very many video parts at that time so like some of the actual features that we got into i didn't really you know, like when we went to build the ravine gap in jackson hole it was kind of like sage is like that's that big ass jump that's in uh, the art of flight should we go look at it? And we just kind of got up there and looking at it and like looking at how big it is and like don't really have anything to like measure it against at that point, really. So we're just kind of like, yeah, why not? Let's do it. And so we ended up building this thing. It took like two days. I almost like died on the first hit. Like we built the in run way too, like pretty bad and had way too much compression and you had to go so fast in that thing because it is like a monster gap. And I just like. You guineaed it? I was supposed to guinea it. And then I like compressed in the bottom of the tranny and just fully like smacked the back of the head, slid off broken branches and everything. Like thought I was going to die. Like thought I was going to be so messed up. Got super lucky. Then Sage hit it and like went slower, but just couldn't like couldn't clear it because the compression was too crazy. So then we redid the whole in run, which is gnarly. Like I pretty much like just knocked myself out, like on the in run, like testing this jump out and then we're rebuilding the in run. You and, got like, like G'd out and just, Oh yeah. Just like compress so much that like, I just went over forward and like it's in the vid. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that happen to some people on some big jumps and it's gnarly. I've done it a couple of times. It's not dope. Cause I get so, like I was saying, I get so amped up that I'm just going to like go as fast as I can sometimes. And like when you got that much adrenaline, you just kind of like, you go, no, no hollow brain head. mode, hollow, hollow head. head. Yeah. Um, but then we ended up rebuilding it, and it was working. We were making it to the landing. Sage hit, like, back double 10 on it pretty early on. I think it maybe took him, like, three tries. Dude, riding with those slope-style dudes in the backcountry, hitting a kicker with those dudes, it can be, like, it's insane. They're so good. They have so many tricks, so dialed that, like, it's kind of just plug and play once they get to the backcountry. So, like, I'm always kind of feeling like I'm playing, like, catch-up. But uh, so I just started going for front 10, hit like probably nine tries before I actually like landed it, dude. And the landing, you can tell the landing is just a complete like war zone. There's like barely any snow left. There's holes everywhere. Dude, like nine I was just times. Like, I can't myself. believe there's a landing left for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, there barely was. Kinda. Took it far left. Yeah, took it far left, found a little pocket, locked into the toes and like was so like. I don't like claiming shit, but, like, after I landed that, after nine times, like, probably one of the gnarliest jumps I've ever hit, like, I couldn't even contain myself at that point. <laughs> like, I put them up. All the boys were stoked. That was a, that was amazing. And you had to work for it. Why that not? was the ender. That was your ender. Yeah. And yeah. then let's talk about your opener, the uh, dub crippy on the natural quarter pipe. Yeah, and that thing was really cool. Like, we knew that thing was up there. Had no idea, like, what it was actually going to, like, turn out to be. And we just, like, it was me and Gabe, actually. Because Red and Sage were sessioning something down the valley a little ways. And then so me and Gabe went out to suss this thing up. And Gabe hit it first and just chose a line so well. Like, it was a perfect line where you could hit the, like, perfect vert. Like, it was straight up the perfect backcountry quarter pipe. Like, probably 25 feet. Like, bigger tranny than anything you're going to get in a snowboard park. Like, the thing was awesome. I don't know if it'll ever be, like, the same, really. Looked at it this year. It looked like garbage. 
couldn't do what you did. It just fills in different. Yeah, I think it just blows in different, and then just stuff melts. Yeah, eventually, and then I don't know. Well, the fact that you didn't take a shovel to it's that's insane. Yeah, I, dude, Gabe straight just hit it once, and it's just it was straight. Like, that's the line. Yeah, straight natural. That's wild. It was awesome. Super cool feature. Probably yeah. like once in a lifetime feature. The jacket flap coming in is the old flapper is a full flapjack scenario. Yeah, that's a good hollow head sound. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be thinking about that when you're going in. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then the other one. This is like the subtleties of understanding the intricacies of what makes somebody a great snowboarder. But you just ripping that that line down the face. Yeah, I'm not. One hundred, the like sunny, like yeah, it's where like, the sun's it's like all back lit, lit. and you just do a fat toe side and yeah. then a heel side, and it's really basic, but it's beautiful because there's an art to a good turn, for sure. I don't know. I just like channeled some like it looked like a big half pipe, and at the time, like I just been out of the half pipe, and I was always carving down the half pipe, so I just kind of hit it with that. And then Tyler was super good at making stuff look good, still is. What's the key to a good carve, good turn? It's a good question. Oh, asking for a friend, asking for a friend. Just tucking that back knee, locking it in, for sure. Locking in the back knee. I think you got to tuck the back knee in. You got you got to ride the back foot. You got to like initiate with the front foot and then ride the back foot out through it. And to like really lock in that back foot, you got to tuck the knee, heel side and toe side. So you initiate with your front foot. That so the front you of your start, the front like of your you edge grab starts edge, it. yep. and then you go. It just kind of flows through. But then you you want to ride it out on the back, mm. and to lock it in, you got to tuck the knee. Tuck the knee. Yeah, like especially heel side, like you got to bring it in. That's why, like people, people, I really like riding. Uh, posy 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 posy. Yeah, you go posy posy. That hurts every my once knees in a while. For some reason, dude. So yeah, I got knee surgery last summer, and I can't go posy posy anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, this one doesn't like turn in as much anymore. Has that affected your turn? Uh, maybe a little bit but riding posy posy is super fun i could still do it it just doesn't feel as good so turning uh you've done baker banked mm. how'd you do not very good i qualified to finals ninth once which i was hyped on i've only done it twice and i was pretty young i would love to go back what about how are your results at dirks and derby you got any podiums dude i got second at the derby when i was like i think gabe beat me that was one of those times he was talking shit, but that was, that was like twelve. When Gabe beats you, does he just did he just drill on you or what? Oh little, yeah, little brother. Oh yeah, he holds that over over your head as as like, long as he can. I mean, he's got to. That's a precious moment. He loves it. How how much older are you than him? I'm four years older. Than yeah, see, that's heavy. Dude. I'm quite a bit older. Yeah. Do you think if if you were a senior in high school, he's in ninth grade mopping you up? In dude, the, it's demoralizing. In it does not yeah. feel good. That'd be a rough, but that dude is so scenario. good at snowboarding. Yeah, he, he's, like, he's just he's a awesome. talented little guy. Um, yeah, I've never done that good in like the Derby or Baker Banked. I've done good in some like other random ones, kind of. I've done okay at Rat Race. I got a surfboard once. That was that was dope. Well, you can always go back and you can do Baker Banked as long as you can walk, but you can't always. You're not always going to be able to do the. The front tens. Dude, you get nerve. I get more nervous for those bank slaloms sometimes than I do for like any other. Really? Yeah. Just because your name's on the line, huh? A lot of people there. I guess. I don't know. I just like you want to do good at those still too, mm -hmm. you know? Who's got a good carve in your mind? Who's the who's the turn gods? Definitely Dirksen. Uh, the correct answer. Well, that's a actually. fact. Yeah. That's not really up for debate. I would say yeah. Temple. Yep. Yep. I would say Terrier for sure too. Mm -hmm. Dude, actually watching Terrier, like, I got to follow him a couple times, and it's insane, dude. The amount of, like, speed and, like, agility and quickness he, like, dips into a turn and, like, holds it is mind-blowing. Well, you guys uh, went and rode Bachelor. It looked like, I think you still had your numbers on, right, when you guys made that edit and were carving around, or yeah, yeah. Baker, Baker, rather? That was fucking awesome. Yeah, that was, like, one of my, like, when people saw that, they freaked out. That was, like, one of my first, like, kind of breakout moments. Definitely, like. Terry, having Terry's name on anything will help you out for sure. But yeah, I mean, yeah, carving around with him and watching him use his edges was insane. We're going to take a second and talk to you about 686. The new men's and women's outerwear is now live on the site. We have all new 686 Gore Tech Pro jacket and bibs, the most advanced Gore Tech Pro products ever created. 
They have fused Polartec alpha body map insulation panels in them. You ever heard of anything like this? This is some technical stuff, huh? Sounds fancy, but Sounds fancy, right? It's uh, Polartec Alpha was designed by the U.S. military to be ultra-light, ultra-thin, ultra-breathable, and quickly trap heat when you slow down. It's used in strategic areas only for the most efficient heating and cooling possible. Sounds insane. I'm going to try it out. You guys should try it out, too. The men's and women's gear is live on the site. Let's pape it. All right, we're going to fire it back up here with a guest question from the Ari Gold of our sport. Just an absolute juggernaut of a sports agent. Ryan Runke. Here Uh we go. What up, Bombhole? What up, Ben? It's Runke here. I had a question. Uh, Over the last eight years, you've been to pretty much every event. The Olympics, X Games, Dew Tour, Peace Park, Natural Selection, uh, Recharge, you name it. What is your most memorable moment or most memorable event you've ever been to and why? Man, that's that's a tough question. Thanks, Rocky. Love you. Um, a lot of different events, though, you know? Like, hard to put a moment on one of them. It's always a good moment from every event, you hope, anyway. Um, just recently, those natural selection events have been crazy, though. Especially the first one in Jackson Hole. That one was nuts. Got super lucky with the snow. That course was insane. Those were some of, like, the best runs I've probably ever taken in my life just because the snow was so good and the, the hits just kind of lined up. So, uh... That one was pretty awesome, and then it was kind of like right around when COVID was dying down, and we were really probably weren't supposed to have so many people like hanging out in one room afterwards, but we had a nice nice kickoff like party. That was a good way to end it for sure. I'll tell you, I was a little unhappy how you rode. Um, I, I had all my I money. Remember <laughs> you, I remember you chirping. I had all my money on Sage, and so I lost the significant. It took it a little bit of a financial hit. Um, <laughs> so due to your... Um, great riding performance but I, I just really fucking pissed off about it to be honest with you how much you get dinged by uh i, I can't remember i think it's like 100 bucks or something like that yeah. that's nice but, that's nice <laughs> um <laughs> is it is it the nights or the days at those events that you cherish more i guess i mean i think like because all those cool people getting together you know what i mean it's dude it is always like so fun like all the different special, heads you're gonna right? hang out with yeah i mean both the whole know? experience yeah because you have a go you go have a great day out on the hill with your homies and then you have a great night as well hang well, out with all the hits what about olympics mm-hmm. we didn't talk about that 2018 olympics was crazy dude um just kind of weird honestly not gonna lie like it was cool but it was just kind of weird they like i mean you say in the like athlete village and we're just kind of in the middle of nowhere it's freezing cold while we were there too like negative 16 fahrenheit like bone chilling cold and we're in these like condos that are unfinished they're going to be like affordable housing for koreans in the future but they're like not done yet there's like plastic on everything and i don't know you're kind of crammed in there you're eating crazy food like i bet the china i've heard crazy ones about the one in china this year but it was just kind of weird the half pipe was like insane like best half pipe i've ever ridden hands down but other than that, just kind of like strange. How was it uh, finishing fourth? One space mm, out of a medal. Yeah. It's, it's, tough. it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. It's uh, the worst, dude. It actually is like the worst place because you did pretty good, you know? I mean, really good. You rode well. Yeah. But no one gives a shit at <laughs> all. Like, if you don't make the box, no one cares. Yeah. And then you're just sitting there watching people slang champagne. You're like, God damn it. And you were right there. Oh, yeah. You kind of had a lot of force in the career. Oh, yeah. I racked them up. I <laughs> wow. racked up the force. It's the worst. I've been there. I know it sucks. Red got fourth this year. I gave him all sorts of shit for it. Oh, yeah. it. Now, <laughs> I know, now he knows how it feels. I heard I heard that you were in a weird, twisted way. You were happy when he got fourth. Oh, yeah. Now he knows Just how it feels. Just so he's <laughs> experienced that, huh? <laughs> I mean, he's already got the W, so yeah. you know, you got the give gold. him a fourth. It'll just like fire him up for the next time around. Yeah, he's a bit of a problem out there. He is. He's a unit. Yeah, he's a bit of a Clydesdale, you might say. A tiny one. A tiny little <laughs> baby junior Clydesdale. <laughs> he's a miniature Clydesdale. An adolescent Clydesdale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so then what about, all right, let's talk about some peak contest experiences. Second place X Games. You put her down. Mm-hmm. How was that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, when you land a contest run, it's a crazy feeling. Just like all that adrenaline at the top. 
and you lace it at the bottom. And especially when you're doing stuff that's like super scary too, just like the amount of adrenaline and then to put it down and actually like get on the box is super special for sure. It's a good feeling. That's why people chase that for sure. But the, it's like you said, it's such an interesting thing. The highs are so high. They're so fucking high. But the the lows of like practicing, training, getting ready, feeling confident, wanting it really bad, wanting the win. Oh, yeah. And when you show up and you don't ride well, it's fucking depressing. How do you deal with that? Yeah, so demoralizing at times. I don't know. You just got to kind of shed it, I guess, or let it fuel you, you know, like, well, if I would have maybe like went to bed a little bit earlier or really thought about what I was going to do or got like a couple more runs in, then I would have like done better, you know, just let it fuel you, I guess. Well, went to bed a little earlier. You yeah, like, I don't know. Just so you're not like, or maybe I shouldn't have had that third beer. So you, I don't know. before in a, in a big event, you might find yourself having some beers with the boys. Sometimes it's hard not to. You're in like the contest scenario and there's like other riders there. Like, so there's a slope style contest going on at the same time. So like X games, the slope style guys are done. Oh, they're in full, just like hang out party mode. And you don't like at X games for half pipe, you're hanging out all day. Sunday. It's kind of losing it your Sunday. mind. It's and the it's last the event. end. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. like all that temptation of people just like having fun. Cause everybody is there to have fun except you pretty much like the agents are there getting all twisted. <laughs> right. Uh, rookie. Yeah. And they're doing it every you. night. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, yeah, so everyone's just there having a blast. Like, all your homies pull up to just, like, watch and have fun and hang out. So there's a lot of, like, good times going on. A lot of temptation. On, you got to, like, yeah, you got to, like, try not to get sucked into that. When you were doing half pipe, were you riding special boards, like, special made, or do you, were you riding factory productions? I was riding just the factory custom. Factory custom 58, I want to say, and then we'd send them to McDermott, and he'd tune them all up and stuff, or whoever. But yeah, I tell you, the first time I got on a board waxed by McDermott, man, whew, I could barely get off the chairlift. He was I ripping Switch down. McTwist. Yeah. He was ripping like right off. The I'd gate. never gone that fast in my it life. Actually, is like if you have an old board and its base is all dinged up, take it to like a ski shop and they'll give it a base grind and put texture on it, and that thing is like a brand new missile. Pro tip it's ready to from go. a serious pro right here. And it's maybe like fifty beans. Like it's not that bad. Like better worth than, it. Better than buying a new board, I'd say. Keep that yeah. thing tuned. Three time winner. Of Peace Park. It's pretty prestigious. Yeah, that was like, that put me on the map for sure. I got to thank Dan Davis for that one. Steely Dan? Yep. yep. I was just hanging with him in New Zealand. He's, he's a good dude. Well, that's <laughs> the perfect blend of uh, of basically transition and slope style and mm -hmm. carving. Mm -hmm. It's kind of built for it. Luckily, it doesn't have a lot of rails. Uh, otherwise, you know, you'd probably I be in trouble. skipped all those. Oh, you just <laughs> skipped the rails. Oh, yeah. Or like bonk them, gap them. Touch them or gap them, and that's that. That was kind of my Steve for a while, for sure. Keep it Still safe. Is. Yeah, not a fan of the steel, but, yeah, Peace Park was awesome, for sure. Um, definitely kind of put me on the map. It put you on the map? I would say. Really? That, like, got me, got me on a different level anyway, like, put me on another level. I but would say. What about the launch? That That's seemed like it put me on the map. The launch, launch. The launch, launch was like the first time I ever got any exposure for yeah, I mean, sure. You showed up to the launch and you were definitely noticed quick. I mean, you got covers, mm, I want to say. Or was I that a, more Super Park? One of the, the first time I got a photo from the launch ran, it was just a spread. But then I think Super Park, I got some covers. You got me a couple covers from Super Park. I want to say I got you a launch cover, but it was in Europe. So yeah, you, you got me a White saw. Lines cover. White Lines. Yeah, UK. from the launch. Yeah, yeah. That that one, my parents got that one hanging up. That one's dope. Do they? Yeah. Sick. Huge, how's, huge method. How's shooting him. with Stony Bud? Dude, it's chill. You don't even see him. Well, just snipes you. <laughs> Actually, you do see him. You see him down there looking all gangster. Kind of <laughs> Tech nine, so, huffing the grit. At yeah. the launch, you know, it's not as intimate as like a street shoot or a kicker shoot. You're For just sure. like 100 riders are coming through. And Were you yeah. intimidated by Stony Bud? Dude, probably the first time I ever saw him, I was like, dude, this guy's looking gangster. Who the fuck is this yeah. dude? <laughs> <laughs> All Tech 9 kit. He was young. I was young, too. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And then Cell like Bridges was there. scaring the shit out of me, yeah. too. You guys just all kind of looked like hard asses back in the day to me. I'm not going to lie. That's tight. But I was a little scare, kid. Scare the kids into jumping. I love Buds. I was like, I always have these run-ins with the cops, man. They just, they're just out to get me. I'm like, well, you're wearing a Tech 9 3XL jacket, <laughs> resi tip, sky high, huffing a grit, looking like a just hoodlum out, out there. Out in the streets, all <laughs> weird hours, too, <laughs> winter time. <laughs> Full profiled. Yeah. He's a victim of profiling. I am a it's victim a of He's profiling. Victim. All right, Buds. You know what it's time for? I think I do. What's that? Name that video part.
Name that video part is presented by the Icon Pass, buds. Fall is on hand, and the first flakes of white gold are currently blanketing mountains around the world. Now, the stage set with over 50 of the best destinations on the globe. The season of fun is fast approaching. Icon Pass has welcomed seven brand new destinations to its growing family of iconic landscapes. So, pull out the map. Give notice to your boss, romantic partner, parents, or whoever needs to hear it, and get ready to slay the scene at Chamonix, Mont Blanc Valley in France, La Array in Japan, Idaho's Sun Valley, Snow Basin Panorama, and Sun Peaks in British Columbia, and Andorra's XYZ. And as a reminder, new pass options have been added to the mix for 22-23 Starting at only $269 adult pass, the Icon Session 2-Day and Icon Pass Session 3-Day offers a range of affordable entry points, adding flexibility and availability for riders of all means and styles to experience this family of unique worldwide destinations. With, as- with access to over 50 destinations worldwide, grab your Icon Pass before prices go up. Once you have an Icon Pass in hand, adventure lives everywhere you want to be. What do you think, Buds? This is pretty big for his career. Yeah, this is huge. Right now, we're looking at a filmmaker over here. This guy is making his own movie. So if he does not get this, I mean, what? people won't take him seriously. Yeah. Okay. If oh, you no. When you were just doing contests, you kind of had a pass. Yeah, it's a pass. Contest guys aren't expected to like yeah. study movies. This could be a potential career-ending uh, mistake. Well, you, you know what will happen if he doesn't All get it. All downhill from here. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he doesn't get it, I mean, it's going to affect sales of his movie. Yeah, that's actually views. true. That's views are going to be lost. Runky's going to be pissed okay you better get it also by the way your brother served this up so if you don't get it you take it up with him that's his fault yeah okay here we go erickson wow he fucking that was good dude it's a great song too bend royalty bend royalty right there working for the weekend yeah and lame great song dirksen and lame wow Okay, what you got yourself here is a bomb oh, hole. Thank you. Yeti uh, carry as they call it. It's filled with bomb hole merch. That thing is some loaded. smelling salts in there. This is awesome. You got some sweatpants in there. I figured you're a large. I got a large hoodie. Oh, yeah, I'd hit a large. And then... Um, XL for the pants, but... Yeah, we might have XL sweats. There's some baggy doggers. Hell, yeah. Thank you, and, guys. Uh, we got a mug in there. I was definitely Looks mad like nervous for got, that. I'm not going to lie. Looks like he's got one of those new license plate. Uh, oh, yeah, new pants. license plate cover. Yeah. All available Dope. at bombhole.com. You can throw that thing on the ground, though. That's all good. You don't want that blocking your right. yeah, blocking ugly mug. Camera view. That thing is loaded with merch. Okay. For name that part, part two, video part, part two, this is for the listeners. If you know what video part this is, comment on Instagram, on the bombhole's Instagram, on Ben's thumbnail photo. And that's where we pick our winner. Here we go. Great video part. You know that one? I think. Say it, we'll beep it out. Is it yep. Yeah. And the yep. Okay. Dude, Thank you guys not for work. playing. Name that video part. He, he just aced it. Yeah, you were sweating that. How are you feeling about it? I'm, I'm hyped. I feel like you picked ones that I... Is that a lob? I don't think that's too much of a lob, Dirksen and Lamb. Yeah, but that's like definitely, I don't know, I watched that one a bunch, for sure. There's a lot of times that I'm listening to the show and I'm like, I have no idea, not going to lie. Yeah. Well, you're from Bend, he's the king of Bend. If you didn't get that, you may have had to move to a different Yeah, you uh, probably would have got like uh, beat down and kicked out of town. Go yeah. Go to Idaho. Yeah, to go to Idaho. Go back to your roots at Bogus Basin. Mm-hmm. Great resort. Dude, that's a, a one of the Boise. best names for a resort right there, Bogus Basin, whoever coined that name for that is a great person right there well now that you're a credible oh, uh filmmaker uh you started your new video fleeting time new project you're kind of like the the travis rice to to fourth phase i guess or that's it that's all the is uh b ferg to fleeting time a major marquee project you're kind of the marquee face of this thing you put it together um you know how how was how was it how was the experience really kind of cranking up the pressure with that one um yeah dude it was awesome it straight up was so fun we like runky and blatt and homestead worked really hard to like you know produce the thing and that allowed me to go out with my homies for two years and 
snowboard and ride what we wanted to ride. It was a blast. I loved it. How did you come up with the name Fleeting Time? I love it. You do? Yeah. Word. Um, <laughs> are you not down? He seems well, surprised. Well, dude, sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm not that down. Like, it originally was a fleeting abundance of time. And then Runky shot that one, like, right away. He's like, that's way too wordy. And then he just started calling it time. And I was like, you can't call it time. I really didn't want a one-word movie title. Because I feel like that's kind of been a trend for a while. I just, like, wanted to get away from that. I guess I was just, like, I was straight driving by myself cross country I think we was like driving from idaho or something and just started thinking about movie title names and thinking about two-year projects in general and then kind of that kind of just flowed into life in general as i as well but like you got two years to film a movie that's a lot of time but that shit's ticking like it's going clock's ticking like if you don't take advantage of that time like you're not going to have something you're stoked on you're not going to produce so it's kind of like take advantage of the time you got and then it's also, you can get kind of dark with it and think about it like it's not snowing as much as it used to back in the day. And I can feel it. Like I feel some effects of global warming. Like we might not be able to like take advantage of these backcountry zones for the rest of our, you know, for the rest of my life anyway. And kind of take advantage of it while you can. Like the clock's ticking a little bit unless we change something, you know. But then there's like all sorts of things you can tie into time as like a thing. So it just kind of works. I'll say it's kind of serendipitous. I uh, got to see the movie yesterday. I got a sneak peek because I think it comes out shortly after this podcast drops. Uh, first of all, incredible. You guys and your whole squad just f- put a beat down in the backcountry. Um, and, uh, you know, I think personally you're probably going to win Rider of the Year. I haven't seen everything else yet, but it seems like you're you're uh, a shoe in But uh, who knows? Haven't seen all the other footage come out. Um, but going back to fleeting time, I'm reading a book right now called 4,000 Weeks, and the entire premise of the book is that we generally, if you live to be, I think, around 80 years old, that's 4,000 weeks. So we kind of, the premise of the book is basically we kind of live life like we're going to live forever, but Uh it's so, it goes by in the blink of a hat, uh, the the drop of a hat, you know, like the blink of an eye, and it's um, it's just kind of serendipitous that that's the name of your movie because it's if you, you gotta you only go around once you know you you gotta get it in yeah and, and I love the the name of that and the the kind of mindset behind that yeah for sure I mean clocks ticking take advantage um kind of even like on that subject like well it's crazy when you put a number on it like that like four thousand weeks like when you think about it like that that's almost like a little stressful you know but I was just in like New Zealand and I was riding park with all the like crazy good like slope style half pipe riders down there and they're go like losing their minds dude and i'm like there and i haven't ridden much park in the like past couple years and that shit is gnarly dude that's hard on your body like i left that trip my knees like hurt like when and i remember being like those kids age and just romping dude like those years like at peace park and super park and the launch like that shit didn't phase you but now like shit getting a little bit older doesn't showed last up, forever, but showed up in New Zealand and like rode like three days in a row and was like, God damn, I'm sore. But yeah, take advantage. I have a take Patreon question from Joseph McCarty. Um, for the new film Fleeting Time, what were the unique differences in your role that bring up the official label in collaboration with Ben Ferguson? A lot of great writers are involved, but don't have that label. Yeah, so I guess it was, like, originally it was supposed to be, like, a continuation of Joy. Like, it was going to be me, Red, and Sage. And then Tyler was going to film it again as well. But then kind of as we got closer to it and we had a bunch of COVID stuff kind of, like, going on that made it kind of seem weird to do a movie project at the time. The other boys kind of bailed. Like, Red had to do some Olympic stuff. Sage decided he wanted to do, like, real snow and do some other things. So then it was kind of just me. And... Homestead, the producers, Runky and Blatt are like, well, Red Bull's going to give us this money. Like, it'd be kind of stupid to just, like, turn it down and not do it. Because at first I was like, man, I don't know if I want to do this thing. Like, that's a lot of pressure. Like, full-on movie. Like, put my name on it. Two-year project. Bunch of budget. Like, that's a lot of pressure. So I was definitely nervous for that at first. But then kind of was like, well, take advantage. And once it was like that, then I just kind of dove into it and decided to put my all into it and try to make it something special you know if you are going to get the budget in the two years to do something like 
try to do the best you can and try to like own it. Well, I think you succeeded in that yeah. after watching it. Were you the guy like pulling, organizing the trips and like calling the shots and for sure. Like I definitely had a bunch of help. Like, uh, the whole crew is like a bunch of badasses, honestly. Like, uh, Blatt's really good at what he does. Like he takes amazing photos and then has been in the game for a little, like a while as well. So knows different zones and I'm still learning like different zones, you know? So I'm not like a, like a backcountry vet by any means. I've gotten pretty lucky to go out with like dudes like Mikey Rents and like Blavelt and those guys and learn a bunch from them. And Mikey taught me a lot when we were filming for one world. Um, but yeah, the whole crew is a bunch of badasses. Justin Eels, our, like, the DP, he crushes. Um, he's been in the game for a while, so he's got a good head on his shoulders and knows how to point us in the right direction. But yeah, a lot of it was like me. And then also the homies too. I'm always going to like incorporate other people. I'm not going to come up and just be like, no, we're going here. We're going here. Like I would like to keep it more of a collaboration, like checking weather with the homies and being like, well, it looks like it's going to be good in McCall. Like let's mob there. And then like we get out there and like, okay, what should we do? Let's just tool around and figure something out. So definitely like getting the crews together and pushing in the right direction, but then also just a collaboration with the other boys on the crew. I can't wait to see some of the photos Blatt's going to put out from some of those poppy jumps in that movie. There's some good looking stuff. Yeah. I think uh, so. A lot of the stuff came out from the first year. Oh, or, true. What about the talk about the birthday ball session? Yeah. The four, birth. I heard Black got four in, covers. But yeah, AK, he did. Get, right? He at least got three covers. Three and, covers. Uh, three covers in AK. And it was actually Justin Eels' birthday. And we were ripping in birthday, birthday ball. ball. It's kind of perfect. So three covers in how how much of a how many days? One day. Three covers in a day. Yeah, one day. Cause Zoe, I think Zoe got a cover there. Zoe got a cover. Dan got a cover, and then I got a cover. I think I got three covers in a day before. Man, there's. Uh, let's talk about a couple notables from the movie. Um, I think first things first. Talking on, uh, you know, Zoe's in there. She doesn't have a ton of clips, but they're all so badass and. Uh, you know, she gets caught in right in the beginning in a pretty heavy slide. Oh, yeah. And that was, like, early on in the trip to Haynes. Like, she had ridden Alaska before because we were just coming off of that natural selection contest. So she, like, had some experience. But that was, like, our first day going out was me, <coughs> Mickle, and her. And we had ridden a couple lines before, but nothing, like, really worked out that well. And then she dropped in and did that, like, heelside turn on a pretty open panel above some exposure. And the thing popped on her and she got sucked in and I'm at the top ready to go and just listening to the radio. Everyone's yelling avalanche and, you know, taking the, the proper steps to be ready for a rescue. And then she's just like laughing on the radio. Like it's spit out at the bottom and she's got this like goofy laugh. She kind of like, Ooh, like it's, it's hilarious. And she's like hitting it with that and like was all good. It was crazy. Cause most of the time you'd think like anybody you get caught in an avalanche, you're going to be pretty shook. But she, like, handled it really well. A lot of Alaska, like, faces, as long as there's not, like, a big Bergstrom beneath it or anything, is pretty safe for as far as, like, avalanches go because it's going to spread out so far as long as there's not a terrain trap. So it, like, pushed her out. It didn't bury her at all. She came out on top and it was all good. That's crazy. A lot of people I've seen in Alaska, that'll happen to them, and they'll, like, go home and never want to come back. Straight up. That happened to me one year with Absinthe, actually. Yeah. Like, first... First, uh, we were doing a snow check, not even filming anything. And the guide's like, okay, there's some exposure here. It's open here. And then you get into the shoot. Who wants to go first? And it was like me, Mueller, Fasani, and Meeks, and Hosnick, and none of these guys. And we just took like a, a run down the ridge, and it was like the best snow I'd ever ridden in my life at that time. Like just duff, like amazing, like kind of low light, so it's like sparkly and shit. And I'm like, why don't these guys want to go? Because I don't know. I was like pretty young. And then I drop in and like first toe side turn in and it'll pops. And I get like, I try to edge to the chute because I know there's exposure down that way. And then I get swept and it puts me into the chute, but I go dark and it like puts me under going for a little ride and then it pushes me out on top. Kind of same scenario, kind of fanned out, but had me shook for a minute. Like the next day I definitely was tripping. I was tiptoeing heavily, but then I locked up and we're all good. Nice, yeah, you gotta get back on that. What horse. about some some good pointers too? I think about like early people sharpening their teeth in the backcountry you have those heavy carving legs. Mm. Like you kinda have to learn to have that Gordon Lightfoot and know yeah, where to turn light, nor know when to lay into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is definitely like key. 
because you can and also you don't want to blind yourself on stuff too like if you're like railing into a turn you're gonna like not be able to see and then you're really screwed for the listeners what's the trick yourself what's the trick to not blind yourself quick little dragging digging that tail down deep and giving a quick one and then like spreading out a turn Instead of like jamming yourself up, like stopping, like a little hockey stop, you're done. Yeah, those hockey stops. You got to arc. You got to like, hit the little slow down wiggles and then arc a turn so you can look around it. Dude, watching Mickles, some of Mickles' footage, like homie straight so tall, he's just like <laughs> sitting above <laughs> all the like never thought the, of that. All the snow, it's insane. Tall people have an advantage out there, huh? And then there's the jump, little step down session. Well, I mean, Zoe, I don't want to give away everything, but does some heavy natty moves, some uh-huh. of the heavier natty moves I've ever seen from a female rider. And then the the step down with um, Zoe and Haley. I mean, Haley does the best front seven I I've ever seen from a female in the backcountry. That was incredible style. Yeah, she went off for sure. We didn't get her out that much. She was super busy with Olympics and contests and everything. But like when she came out, she put up. And it was awesome. And she's the best. I love hanging with Hales. She's awesome. So your relationship with Red, you guys are obviously super close. And it seems like you guys have an incredible yin and yang. Like watching um, you guys hit jumps, you know, his air awareness is unlike anything I've ever seen. He does that switch back nine and he literally like opens up. You can see him look for it and open up and like slow it down to land. You're, I was just blown away by his footage. He killed it. Oh yeah. But I was kind of told that you know you're better at riding lines, so you'll maybe coach him on natural stuff, for sure. and, and he'll coach you on the jump. And I heard a really interesting story about the front ten double that you do, where he was he was kind of oh, yeah. coaching you through that. Oh yeah, because I don't do front double ten like at all. That was the first one I've ever done. I do flat ten, and uh, so I. We built this jump, and of course, we like built it wrong. Like I wanted to do some other trick on it, but the way we built it, like you had to spin to the left hard to get to the landing well. And so I was like, "Well, shit, I guess I'll just start trying front tens." And red, of course, does like, like I did a couple of, like air to fakies or whatever back one eighties, and then red hits like a crazy switch back five, and then I think like his next hit, he goes switch back nine and just like stomps it right away. I'm like, "Okay, shit," so I gotta start chucking. And I got the one big, I got the front 10, so I'm I'm going for that. And for whatever reason, like the way the landing is and how kicky we made the jump, it just like wasn't really lining up very well. And then Red's like, okay, just do a double cork. Like, just go front five to switch back five for me, please. And then I, okay, so I'm thinking about doing this and I go to do that and then fully hook heels off the lip and like blow the lip out. Mm. And then he goes down and I'm like at the top ready to do it again. And he's just smacking the lip, like trying to fix it. And it does not look like it's getting fixed. He's like, yeah, don't go in the middle. Go to the left hard. Front five, switch back five. And then so I do that. And it just like fucking, it, I don't know, it worked out perfectly. It was just like a cork front five to switch back five. And he fully coached me into it. And I guess like while I'm doing it, he's yelling at the top of his lungs, flip it, like <laughs> <laughs> scream and flip it, which is fucking awesome. Nah, I love shredding with Red. He's the man. He's super chill. Like, a lot of the time, I feel like you're super amped. Like, the younger kids, especially, like, super amped to go do stuff. But he's, like, super down to, like, kind of chill and, like, collaborate and think about stuff a little bit more instead of just going out and, like, doing whatever, you know. It's awesome. But I definitely like a good relationship out there. Yeah, he's the man. I definitely had to, like, we were doing some little hikes. He did. He has, like, a super insane shot from this little ridge that we were doing this hike on. But the first day, he, like, wouldn't do the hike. He was like 10 feet behind me. I'm like, come on, Red. It's fine. You just got to make it here. And then we're going to punch up this way and we're going to be all good. And he's like, no, going down. Fully bailed. And then we were like up the valley and you could see like my boot pack along this ridge the whole way. He's like, oh, that's it. Like I'll fully do that. And then the next day he came out, walked on this ridge. It's a what little he, like he spicy. He just didn't want to hike or he was scared of the avalanche? It was or? like a little spicy hike. You know, you're like a little off camber. Like if the snow moved, it could be kind of gnarly. Um, and there's some exposure like you're hiking above too. Mm. So he was tripping on that, but it was locked up. I felt good about it. And I had done it like three or four times at that point, but he was not feeling it. But then the next day he went out and did it and got like a fucking banger. You, he helps you with the front 10 dub. You help him with the, the lines. It's perfect, perfect little ecosystem there. I love the pointer there with the front 10 double, breaking it down into like a cork five into a, Dumped switchback five, basically. It made so much sense. Like, it, like actually doing it, like, you could see the whole thing, like, the whole time. It felt like doing a switchback five at the end. 
Okay, a couple of rapid fire questions here. Um, who's the worst sledder in the crew? Hmm. Uh, hard to put a finger on that. Probably Gabe <laughs> 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 or myself, I guess. I don't know. I pull some dipshit moves every once in a while. Get a little overconfident. Who's getting stuck? The I most? heard Big Air is kind of a liability though, too, but not in a bad way, but like in a rogue way. Big Air like has so much confidence that he'll completely fuck himself like so many times. Too much uh, confidence. Yeah, like put himself in some situations, and then he's stuck for like an hour and a half. You haven't seen him. No one goes and looks for him and helps him. Huh? He's just out there stuck. I mean, everyone. No, you definitely go. Got to help. Yeah, him, homie, get out of there. Okay, we got but a an- couple times. It was like, okay, he did it to himself. <laughs> Let's let him work out of it. We got another question, and this is from Justin Eels. Here we go. <clears throat> hey Ben, Eels here. Skidoo or Polaris? Can't wait to hear this episode. Later. Big question. Got to go do. Oh, that's the right answer. You got to go do. <laughs> Team do. Can't go poo Laris. No, you can't go poo Laris. You're going to go do-do. You got to go do-do. Yeah. <laughs> do the do. You got a turby? I got a derby. Oh, wow. Woo-hoo! Picked it up fresh this year. Actually, Jeez. spring checked it, and it didn't show up. Shipping, you know, COVID and everything. Didn't yeah, show up. Supply like, chain. Excuse. Supply chain. Yeah, supply chain was, issues. Was we got jacked. COVID problems. Didn't get it till like, March, which kind of sucked. So it's, like, pretty much brand new, I guess, for this year. It's kind of perfect. I heard Reggie did a 12 o'clock, boys, the wheelie over to Pancake. Oh, yeah. Full mouse trapped himself. And now he's shook. He used to be, like, <laughs> he... He's really good at snowmobiling, especially for like for how small of a human you like he is. You would think he would kind of like not be able to whip the thing around, but homie like whips the thing around until he mouse trapped himself. Now he's all shook and a little light on the throttle, I think. <laughs> so you guys wrote a bunch of lines, but you also hit a bunch of cheese wedges. Who was losing at Rosham? Who was having the tough luck of the draw with Rosham? <laughs> kind of went back and forth. Um Red had to hit some stuff first for sure, which thank God he did on a couple times. And then I had to hit some stuff first, and it, it all worked out in the end. Um, we built one jump in McCall that with Jared that just fully didn't work. Spent like three days in a snowstorm. It was like me, Jared, and Malachi. Red got lucky. His snowmobile was in the shop. Little bastard. But, um, yeah, <laughs> built this thing for like three days, put it like this in cra- like craziest in run. Like probably shouldn't have even tried to build the jump because the in run was so crazy but made like a freeway because we knew we were going to need as much, like as much speed as possible. And then like you couldn't clear it like five feet like short every time. And I lost that one. I went first on that one. But then Red got like a pretty heavy one this year in Whistler that he had to hit first. And if he that wouldn't diesel have, drop or what's the name of that jump? That one's called Mother. And Mother, I guess oh yeah. the uh, like the OG Canadian guys will say that we hit Stepmother. Because the true mother that like Devin teed off is like even higher, dude. And the jump is gnarly. Like one of the gnarliest jumps I've ever hit for sure. Flying out of the sky. Big ass step down. Dude, it looks insane in Big the Big ass step down, yeah. And that's just stepmother. Yeah, we just hit stepmother. Yeah, Rasmund and I was all like, we were all hyped up. We like hit this big ass jump. We're like, fuck yeah. And then saw Rasmund the next day. He's like, Heard you guys hit stepmother. <laughs> like, <laughs> Fuck you, Raz. <laughs> you guys were all hyped. Yeah. That one's showtime. Just brought though. us down to a level. Everybody sledding through the valley can see that session. Oh, yeah. It's like right there. It's showtime. For sure. Uh, going back to some funny jump sessions, I heard from your brother that um, there's a funny story about that clip of him over jumping one of the kickers. Uh, oh, yeah. That was the first jump we hit for the whole project, actually. Um and Blatt had known where the jump was from just being out there with those dudes before. Um, and we, like, got out there mad early. Alpine, like, Wyoming, January 2, something like that. Dark, cold, eyelids, like, freezing shut on the sled on the way out there. And we got there and, like, like okay, here's a jump. Trying to, like, figure out how to tool it up. I'm up at the top. And then we see these two red jackets pull up on uh, – Poo layers is and it was it was Sage and Pat. Both wearing red jackets, huh? Both wearing red jackets. Rival crew at at that point. Um Sage was filming for his real snow and I think Pat was like hooking him up and just getting footage along the way. And I was I saw them pull up and I was like, Yes, we beat them. Which those dudes are like gnarly. Like I know the Colonel's program. He wakes up early. He's getting after it. So I was like pretty stoked to get there before him. And then I'm like walking out, like figuring out where to put the in run. And Pat comes up to the top and he's like, hey, how's it going? Like, good, Pat. How are you? 
good to see you. Bummer, bummer, you didn't get to the jump before us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Should have got up twenty minutes earlier. Huh, Matt? <laughs> Squab on site or what? <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, "Okay, well, I got a proposition for you." Oh. He's like, "You let." And which is, I thought this was funny, and maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, but he's like, you let my athlete hit the jump. <laughs> my athlete? <laughs> my athlete. Yeah. I, think, I was like, okay, word. Um, I'll, I'll show you exactly how to build it and where to start from. Oh, geez. So I was like, and honestly, like going into this whole project, like I wanted to film with Sage. And mm. it was me and Gabe as far as riders. So I was like, yeah, fuck it. Perfect. Three riders. We have way more heads to help build this thing. Pat's going to show us exactly how to do it. I was like, yeah, down, let's do it. And so we do it, like build the jump. And then we're like talking about hitting it the next day or whatever. And then meet out there in the morning. And Pat's like, okay, Gabe loses Rochambeau. So he's got to hit it first. Pat's like, okay, start from right here. Go super fast. And Gabe just overshoots the fuck out of the <laughs> thing. Like all just like died. It, like wasn't even close to the landing at all. Wow. <laughs> Great but, advice, Pat. You know what <laughs> would Pat have to say? Oh, I don't know. I th- he was just he was ha- like just trying to be mad helpful. I don't think he was like love that. He sounded like, like Ryan lapping Hogan. us on the sled the whole time. Like he was. Can my athlete side. hit the? Gi- oh, here's the deal. I'll show you how fast to go if my athlete can hit the jump. Sounds like Ryan Runke right there. Yeah, my yeah. athlete. It was pretty funny. I'm pretty sure he said that. Maybe I'm like. I'm sure no, right. Gabe said the same thing. Uh, did you? And then you served up the switchback roadie on that hog. Is mm-hmm. a heater. Yep. I'm hyped on it for sure. And then Gabe front seven it too. And that's a dope clip as well. You know what's Super what my favorite Gabe clip? It's really like, it's not crazy by any means, but he cab nines that little popper jump that just is cool as fuck looking and his steez is dope. Dude, cool. that jump was awesome. We just like got super lucky into that one. We were in Nelson like before Natty Select contest this year and the snow was all pretty like garbage, but there was this one little zone back there and that little, little nugget was right there. It was perfect. Well, we got a guest question from your bro, nice Gabe Ferg. Dude, just a slew of guest questions. Here we go. Yeah, you got a lot of a lot of guest questions. A lot of people People coming out of the woodwork. Yo, Ben, how you doing, brother? What happened when we pulled up to Canada first day and the local OG homies were not feeling our vibe? (laughs) Let them know. Oh shit! I like this question. Yes, we're in some obscure place in Canada that must not be named, and. Like, really, you shouldn't go there unless you, like, know somebody. And we knew somebody, so we are like, pretty good. But we rolled up to the lot, and it was just me, Gabe, and Jared, so we didn't have, like, a local head with us. And we fully got told to turn, like, get the fuck out of there. No. Yeah. It was like, it's family day. You can't come up here. You guys got to get out of here. I'm taking my kids up here. We're going to go shred pal. You can't have none of that. Like, you got to get out of here. And so we bailed, dude. And then the uh, a couple of the other dudes were pretty chill and like told us some other spot to go, and we like had great runs and everything, but fully got clipped. From so the who spot. sent you out of there? Um, I don't know if we even want to say. Yeah, yeah. just some loke dogs. We'll just say loke dogs. We can't bleep it out. It's time for me to go take some fit. I mean, talk some fit. Talk fit? Let's talk fit with Volcom. Did you take a fit earlier I, in the bathroom? I did, actually, and uh, not all of it came out, so let's let's have some more fit. Let's talk fit. Bonjour, Bon Paul. Uh, we're going to talk some fit. Arthur Longo here. I'm introducing you my uh, collection. For me, when it comes to the fit, I wanted something kind of close to the body, but not too much, a little... Uh, a little baggy enough to have layers underneath and you know to have like a nice little silhouette so you know i can cinch it and it's a, i would say it looks like a little bit like squarey boxy maybe a bit baggy but not too much and that does the job perfectly for me and i hope it will uh, for you too and so that's it let's shred all right, let's get into some clips that were fucking heavy from the movie notable clips you went to valdez and you kind of put your Big Mountain Jeremy Jones pants on and rode some spicy terrain. Mm-hmm. Um, how was it getting into the, the freaking hogs country out there? The hogs country. Hogsville. How was Hogsville 2K? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking terrifying, honestly. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's heavy shit, and you can't, like, it's big and steep. And you can't see anything when you're on a lot of those. And they're not like, like Haynes is a little different. Haynes is like super steep, but at least it's like steep the whole way, like one pitch. But like Valdez, at least where we were riding some of these lines, 
they're like these big steps, you know, it's like ridges and then it steps over and it drops. So every time you're like about to drop over, you're just like, well, I hope I'm going the right way over this roll. You know, like those, those co- convex rolls are gnarly. Yeah. And it's a lot of that up there. Cause it's just like these ridges that like roll down. How do you know where you are in the line? Because it's it, for the listeners, people that don't understand riding Alaska, it's totally blind and it's huge. Yeah, you just kind of got to like hopefully get a good photo, good video, and then really like pick out some landmarks and then just really try to like remember which way you're supposed to go at the landmark. And that's what's crazy. Like some of those longer lines, like there's so many different like key points in it where you got to remember to be like on point in this certain area, like. So you can make it to the next key point. So it's like a, you got to have a good memory, you know, or like ease me confident. It's nice to be like when you're dropping in, it sucks. Like second guessing, like where you're going, you know, it's super awesome. If you have like a good photo. Yeah. Using the phone, phone, phone from the Polaroids back in my day. I know that's heavy. I can't imagine doing that stuff. That's crazy. Cause it's so nice to just ease it. Like you, I straight up like flying around in the helicopter. I keep my phone right here in this pocket. I keep this glove off and I'm just ready to like snap whatever. Be ready. Yeah. And like if you didn't have like that readily available, it makes it so much more complicated and technical. Chris, in the 1400s, we had to draw a picture. Oh, you did? From yeah. the alley. We yeah. Would, it was a, we wow. would get a caricature, like an artist with us. Mm-hmm. And, get a hey, can you draw that face? Yeah. You and then you stu- just pull your little Yeah, picture a Clydesdale out. pull you up to the top. <laughs> yeah. Clydesdale. We didn't have helicopters. <laughs> Pull up a stone tablet. Yeah, it was a stone <laughs> tablet. You had to chisel yeah. the actual features in. And some strong person would carry that tablet down, yeah. and you'd refer to it and be like, okay, we got to go over this ruler. Somebody like Z-Ferg would carry that yeah. up. Yeah, Z-Ferg yeah. would definitely carry it. A character like Z-Ferg. It was a whole different world back then. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Couple so baby. scary, though, huh? Yeah, it's, fu- it's nerve-wracking for sure. Big, like, intense. And if you do, like, there's not that many zones where like if you if you mess up you're gonna be okay but there's like some zones where if you do mess up like it could be really really bad and the guy the guides are giving you a lot of information because the guides have flown in these areas many times with many crews so it's interesting you were just kind of breezed over earlier but you said you know a lot of times this might rip but it'll fan out so they know if something does rip what's going to happen like it's kind of fucking crazy to know like hey i'm going to drop in on this it could rip but if you do, maybe like 45 out of it or yeah. how, how is that experience? Yeah, I mean, I always like, you got to trust your guide. Like you want to be out there with a good guide. And it's like difference between life and death, you know? Um, so it's good to know the guides, like have some experience with those dudes. And then I like to listen to them. I know a lot of people will like try to battle them if they tell them like, no, you can't do it. But I'm pretty much if the guide tells me not to do it, I'm not going to do it. And I always check. I'm like, what do you think about this? Like I'm going to make a turn on that panel before hitting that little like nose. Like, how do you feel about that? And he'll either be like, yeah, I feel pretty good about it. Like there's nothing crazy below you. If you like get swapped up and like just stay light and you'd like use that information to your advantage for sure. That's crazy. They battle the guys. It's like, these guys have been back there a hundred times. You know, they know exactly what's going to happen. I think the only dudes that like battle the guys are the dudes who have like been in it for a long, like, Oh, gotcha. Been, like those they're like, eh, I've been the up hogs. here 20 times, too. Like, I know what I'm doing. Like, like the hogs yeah, that makes trying sense. to get, like, a crazy shot are going to be like, I'm doing it. I'm doing this. I feel good about yeah. it. I'm going to do it. I've been here before. But I'm not on that level. You'll get there, though, huh? What about the one line in the movie where you're coming down and you're on, the like, the shoulder of the spine and it's sloughing crazy on both sides and it's, like, an absolute no-fall zone? Yeah, that one was mad scary, but then once I got on it, Oh, it was just so sick. It was so fun. Like, just duff. And you were just, it, like, I thought it was going to be way steeper because looking at it straight on, like, everything looks steeper. And then you actually got on it because sometimes that'll screw you. Like, sometimes you think it's flatter than it is and you get on it and you, like, can't. You just have to, like, lock into a, a Jeremy Jones down the thing on your toe side edge. Because well, it's that steep? Because it's that steep. Sometimes, yeah. So that's, like, if you get into one of those, then you're, like, like, you don't want to get into that, especially if it's, like, dicey on both sides. But this one, like, the convex roll went over, and then it was just, like, like full playground. Just, like, such fun turns. Chill, too. Like, if the cliff wasn't there, it would have been the mellowest run ever. Those big mountain Alaskan lines are so gnarly, and they take so much experience. But it's cool because every time you go, you gain more experience. Is that where you want to push your riding? Yeah, for sure. I mean... 
to go up to like AK or even just like riding lines in general, I think is kind of awesome. And then to like try to incorporate freestyle snowboarding into those lines too, like some of those bigger lines and then trying to find features on the way down, I think is like, that's the shit. That's what I want to do. That's like, if you took like Peace Park and put it on a big Alaska mountain face and you just like connect all these different hits and you can like do a trick on each one the whole way and then maybe get a little spicy with some like exposure or a cliff or something like that's, that's the end all be all I think. Okay. We had a question from Austin Smith, another, um, member of the bend royalty club Bend royalty here we go stone and hello ben ferg um here's my question for you this past winter you invited me on a trip while you're filming for your project fleeting time how did you re- remain cool as a cucumber during that process this is the first like big red bull project since art of flight i was expecting uh stressful scenario out there but it was the most enjoyable scene linking up with you guys maybe just uh talk about balancing expectations and fun all right cool yeah it was super fun to, i had never really like filmed with austin before or curtis for that matter so it was super cool to like get to go out with those guys because when i was a little kid i was like looked up to those dudes just kind of local heroes you know um so that was awesome but i think especially after going out with like rents for a whole year, you really just like know that it's not worth stressing. Like you just kind of take it as it comes and it'll happen. Like if you're forcing it, you're just going to be beating your head against a wall and that's not worth it. And like you're snowboarding. So you want it to be fun, dude. And you want everybody to have fun. Like you don't want to go on a like film trip with other people and be like, make it not fun. So no one's going to want to film with you. So like, and it's just fun to like go out there with your homies and like get shit done. So I don't know. I just feel like it's good to not stress and just kind of take it as it comes. And you most likely will get it when it's good. Easy to lose sight of that when you got all that pressure on you, though. For sure. A lot like, of money involved, right? A lot of money. Clock's ticking. Clock's yeah. ticking. That's These just why, like, when it's helicopters good, aren't when, it's, cheap. when it's good, you take advantage. When it's like you're forcing things or whatever, or, I don't know. You just like, I don't, not that we're ever like completely fucking off out there. Like if it's good, we're going, but you got to like spread the love too. You can't like, uh, cause at times you're out there with like four or five other dudes. So you got to like give everybody a chance to get theirs too. That's, Max. those are really, uh, powerful wor- words I want to highlight because I think in the, in the, maybe the era that, um, I grew up in and it was like very video part based and it was like kind of like I'm filming for my video part yeah. and it's really cool. Um, spoiler alert. It's a bit more of a montage based movie. So it's all the homies, but um, there's this kind of great mentality when a, you see in great movies where it's, you know, I've said this before, but one guy gets a shot. We all get a shot. And that's what it seems like you guys had. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if homie gets a banger, like that's a banger going in your movie, you know, it's only going to make your flick better. So you got to like, I like being on a team too. Like I played team sports growing up and I like the like camaraderie and shit. And I like helping people get shit done. It's fun. And it works out for you. Look at this, this guy, his career worked out great. <laughs> it's because people like being around you. There's a lot of, there's a lot of selfishness in individual sports. And um, it's cool to see when there's, there's kind of a community vibe with that what's what team sports do you play growing up uh i played hockey for a little bit when i was younger Woo! but actually there was no <laughs> no <laughs> ice rink so we were on the blades oh that's well that i wouldn't call it hockey that's roller hockey yeah that's, we played roller hockey yeah. but mainly football oh, you ever, nice. you ever yeah. take the blades out just to go rollerblading when i was uh when i was a little boy for nice. sure <laughs> what position you play in Young football later um i like when i was younger before everybody grew up way bigger than me i was like I was a receiver or running back. Oh, and wow. And once I got, like, high school and shit, I, like, I, I was pretty small compared to everybody, so I got stuck at cornerback. I'd play a little strong safety. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah. Now, Ben and I are in a fantasy football league, and we actually just played each other this week. And how did it go, Ben? Yeah, you, you got my ass. <laughs> <laughs> but, dude, honestly, we're kind of top dogs on the guys, league right you guys now. Have like, been on the league for a couple of years now. Huh? Well, it, it's Since only during football season. But, but yeah. for – Oh, yeah, yeah. How yeah, many, like, cup three years, two years? This like is year three? three. Yeah, year three. Wow. But, okay, did you look at everybody else's scores? No. 
okay, so you got a 170 whopping. Yep. 170. I was like at a 165. Everybody else, we're like 10 points above everybody yeah. else. We're kind of top dogs. I don't know league. what that means. Well, but, I got first pick in the draft, Jonathan Taylor, and then I went, uh, I got freaking Josh Allen. It's pretty much over, you know. Yeah. Apparently it's over. Cannon on him. Yeah. You don't want to be playing against yeah. Allen. Yeah, this is where Bud starts to glaze yeah. over. This is where Bud's really starts to glaze over. I don't know over. any of those names. I don't know the significance of those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a lot of people don't. All right, we're going to get back into it here with a guest question from the one they call T. Ricky. Oh, oh a.k.a. Damn. Travis Rice, he- a.k.a. potentially the new king of band. <laughs> oh. We can't let him come in like that, dude. <laughs> He just moves in day one. Where does hey? Where does Mason Jar stack up? Mason Jar is low on the totem pole right now, but, he, <laughs> but <laughs> he's putting in the time. He's he's working into it. He's low on the pole, really. But you know, <laughs> not in pole position. You got to put the work in. He's had like he's had like one cup, like two like crazy years. This year, those guys' footage out of Bachelor was fucking awesome. You know, where, you know where I'd say he's at as far as uh, King of Band. Tell me, homework's done. Hand in the paper. Yes, homework's done. Hand in the paper. Done. It. You did the homework. He's all, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> you just you just filmed the video part. Yeah. Um, and it's about to come out, and you're maybe potentially going to knock the king off of... Uh, you could become the new king. Yeah. That's what he's saying. I don't need to be king. We can all be kings. He's more of a knight. In our castle. You know, he is more of a knight. He's more of a knight. Yeah. This guy. Okay. He's out jousting. and T. Ricky actually picked up the phone, huh? Yeah, actually, yeah, we're actually Usually really... Usually he sees your name and... Yeah, I think he took, me off his, he took me off his blocked call <laughs> list. <Yeah. I> think. <laughs> have, you, have you ever got his voicemail? <laughs> yeah, it's a baby crying. It's so creepy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so this is from my dear, dear, close friend, potential best man at my wedding. He uh, normally doesn't even pick up your Travis. Calls. Travis Rice. Here we go. Gentlemen, it's a damn honor to be on with you. And just got to say, love what you do and keep up the good work. Ben, I was thrilled to hear you're out bombing out landings in Utah. Uh, look, I just got to preface this real quick. Just say, man, it's been so good watching you thrive, watching you dominate the last couple years natural selection tour. And might I add, board control, second to none. Um, look, I got a quick twofer because I can. Um, look, want to start it off with fleeting time. Two-year film project. Um, how do you manage how do you balance taking on a project like that being lead motivator being the glue that keeps it together while also i mean two years of natural selection tour family lady so on and so forth what's 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 the balance and then the little postscript little bonus question and i'm curious you know this year at bald face I was supposed to go toe to toe with you oh, for shit. the semifinals of the duels. It was Jared Mickle and me and you. <laughs> Semifinal day rolls through, and uh, you and Mickle unable to participate. I'm curious how much of that was due to maybe a similar affliction that took Mickle down, <laughs> and how or how much was that due to the simple laws of physics and centrifugal force tearing apart intercostal muscles as you probably took down tomahawka this season <laughs> look forward to hearing the answers <laughs> all right word lots lots there um balance i guess was the first question yeah great thanks question. travis appreciate it that means a lot um yeah i guess i'm gonna tie it right back into my movie title <coughs> time's fleeting take advantage of that shit um when you are on a trip and the snow is good, get it while it's good. And then, I don't know, contest rolls around. Like, I don't know, just fucking try your hardest on all that stuff. Take advantage of your time. Family, too. You know, relationships with other people. You know, it's a lot of work. And, uh, yeah, just put the time in, I guess. And then <laughs> the reason we didn't battle, I guess, like, we, we were doing these duels up at... Uh, in at bald face for the natural selection and i was supposed to go against ricky but we did the contest the day before and so after the contest everyone's just got like annihilated me myself i I definitely got pretty tuned up that night me meeks craven 
Um, I also had like the biggest slam maybe I've ever taken on that course. That I like uh, last run. So I was pretty dinged up. The knee was feeling like it was going to fall off and I tilted a couple too many the night before maybe and just decided to take a back seat and uh, yeah. I'll come for you next time though. A <laughs> couple of things real quick. Yeah. I love how uh, a lot of people submit guest questions and if they're not like 30 seconds or whatever, you're like, got to hand it back in. T. Ricky, dude, you just let him go. Yeah, he lives by his, his and own And I love how he, T. Ricky's like, because I can. Because <laughs> <laughs> he knows that. He well, everybody else, I'm like, you send a guest question, keep it under 30, try yeah. to keep it under 45 seconds. You know, Trav? Minute long No question. time limit. Floor is yours. Yeah, take the show. <laughs> A lot, of good, <laughs> a lot of good adjectives in there. I'm not yeah. even entirely sure what they mean. Yeah. But, um, they kind of confused me a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, same here. Same here. <laughs> we might need a, dic- a dictionary yeah, for the next thesaurus. T. Ricky, a thesaurus, <laughs> something like that. We've got to get one of those on hand for T. Ricky's questions. Uh, then part, or yeah, so you answered both of them. Yeah, I think you got so them both. Let's, let's get back to getting um, completely pie-eyed, yeah. if you will, uh, cross-eyed, <laughs> annihilated, um, yeah, how was that night? Did you really uh, give us a couple details? Dude, I think I maybe even, like, overdid it too early. Like, immediately after the contest, I think they iced all of us in the cat on the way back to the lodge. Oh, you got iced. Zoe was doing, like, shoeies out of her boot and stuff. Like <laughs> shoeies? Legend. Yeah, the booties, I guess. Well, you, you, pour, call booty, yeah. you pour the ice in the boot? Yeah, she... Well, it's called a shoey. A shoey. You're from oh, Australia, a, <laughs> from New Zealand. Oh, yeah, do a shoey, mate. Do a shoey, mate. Hey, shoey, mate. mate. We're doing shoeies, mate. Yeah, hit a big shoey right in the kit. Oh, and your whiplash <laughs> must have been... Oh, dude, I was bawling. crazy, dude. That, yeah, that. Let's talk about Tommy. T- he he said Tommy of the year. T O T Y might have been of the century, dude. It's a good tomahawk. Like it's the most times I've flipped consecutively. Like, dude, head to head to board. What's the sure. key? What's the key to a really violent tomahawk? Yeah. Walk us through yeah, it. Walk us protect through the them. protect the neck. Protect your <laughs> at neck. All costs. But how do you how do you wrap it up and just hope? Like especially that one because were was, you holding was, your head? Oh yeah. yeah, I like that's a pretty good. Just like I always hit that. Yeah, one. grab your head when that you're one, Tommy. I think that one saved me a couple times. But uh, but how do you initiate it? Initiate a good time. Yeah, how, what's the key to initiate? I thought we were watching the <laughs> punching that nose down first. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was like the Olympics floor routine going on. With yeah. all the cartwheels how, and many, stuff. how many back hands <laughs> yeah. I'm pulling? <laughs> Hit the like, vault. Yeah. We got to do that for a bomb. Well, we do Resi of the year, but we're gonna have to do Tommy of the yeah. year as well. Tommy, that's a good one. Um, yeah. That one in particular was like kind of freaky because there are some, like a decent amount of trees on that run. So the whole time I remember like. Flipping way too many times, like it's lasting way too long at this point. I'm still flipping, like enough time to think, you know. Like a lot of the time, it's like duh, 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 and you're done. But this one, I was like, okay, still flipping. Here we go, <laughs> coming in for a sixth one. <laughs> Protect the neck, please. No tree, please. No tree, please. No tree. Am I going seven? What's happening? Goggles here? are annihilated. <laughs> like the whole thing. The reason that happened, though, straight up, I've had to, like, battle Meeks in these uh, natural selection contests multiple times, and the dude, like, he, for whatever reason, he's, like, dropped before me multiple times, and he will hit, like, just a crazy, like, back five on some messed up feature, and then once he does that, I'm like, okay, well, I gotta, like, do some crazy shit if I want to beat him, so. Do you, went, do you have, went, like. Went for the back sev, landing was a little suspect. <laughs> Kind of a little, like, wind-packed crust on the top, and then she just rolled me. You got served up. Do you have, uh, do you have like, option A, safety run, option B, rogue pony? Yeah, for sure. Um, and that, like, so the whole contest thing, like, those uh, natural selection contests, you're just, like, staring at the course, like, for, like, a week in advance. So you just have, like, all these different potential lines in your head, and then... The day of the contest, like, we had some, like, variable snow conditions. Like, the left side of the course was real stacked, super good snow, like, mad good snow. And then the farther you went right, like, the worse and worse it got. So, like, a lot of people stuck to that left side. But then after they send everybody down and it kind of narrows down, there's only so many options for good landings. So then you kind of got to start working into the the worst snow. But, yeah, there's always, like, backup runs and there's, like, plans you have. And What percentage of it is coming in and being, like, taking mental notes of watching other people and what percentage of it is just riding intuition into all these blind features. So like anytime before I'm going to drop in, I have like a, excuse me, full plan. Like I know what exactly I'm going to hit. And then I guess if you like get bumped off of it, then you can kind of freestyle, but dropping in like you want, like, yeah, your seating is pretty cool. Cause then you get to know how the snow is and everything. 
but then at a certain point like that doesn't really matter anymore like you've already done it so you know like what's good and what's bad and then you just kind of got to go but yeah what about alaska for natural selection um so yeah that's like a whole nother thing because then you're just like on some crazy face and you, we really didn't get a shred that much this year beforehand we took like a couple runs maybe and even like the couple runs we did do like there was some like snow moving and stuff so like pretty gripped before dropping into that one and there's just like a level of unknown when you're riding alaska like kind of how we talked about before we're like not exactly sure where you're going so if you kind of like make it down and like you hit all the marks that you wanted to hit you're pretty stoked i think um it just adds it to a level where it's harder to get like more freestyle because it's like dropping into those lines it's a little more technical for sure and then actually the bald face course is probably the scariest course just because of the amount of like trees because there's places where like you do tommy like luckily i like chose that landing to try a trick on because like if i did fuck up like it was pretty clear like i wasn't going to go flying into like a a big tree but in some of those upper zones, like, if you were to go for something up high, like, the potential for, like, really messing yourself up is pretty high. Now, with the current state of, of contests, you know, there's a lot of mixed opinions about slope style and half pipe and, and the degrees of rotation and just the sheer acrobatics that goes into these contests that it's making... I think some people feel a little bit lost to their roots of what connected them to snowboarding, but it feels like the natural selection is the new exciting contest. Everybody's excited about it. We have a watch party here and go berserk and freaking, uh, uh, maybe hypothetically put some dollars on it. Allegedly, I should say for legal purposes, mm. I've heard um, of that but, happening, but, but I didn't I, see. Yeah, anything. I didn't see. I, didn't I don't see know. But, but regardless, yeah, yeah. Um, going back to, to the contest, what are your thoughts about the natural selection and what it's doing for snowboarding? Uh, I mean, I think it's really cool. Cause like, there are there is a point in your career where you're like you aren't going to be hitting park jumps and being competitive on a slope style course or in a half pipe and then like you want to make that transition into like riding in the backcountry and filming video parts and then it just kind of allows you to still do contest with a different like uh set of knowledge you know it's like a it's like a level up to a different style of contest like you learned all this stuff from like going out and filming and you can take that stuff and put that into this new style of contest and they're really fun like straight up i've had some of the best runs of my life like doing these contests because you do go to these spots and you wait for the snow and then you get like amazing pow and it's like a run where it's like fully like freestyle like hit after hit so it's like some of the best run and also like it adds because filming you get that adrenaline rush you know you're nervous you like you gotta like lace it to get a shot so it makes you nervous but then the contest like nerves are a little more so you get into that like adrenaline that we've talked about before and you make it to the bottom of one of those and you like laced it and stood up and like especially if you did something that you're really hyped on like that's a dope feeling so i i love being in them honestly it's a lot out of the year like it's a big commitment it's at least like three weeks you know where you could be like filming or doing something else. So it is like a big commitment, but I do really enjoy them. It's really cool to see the way that, uh, unlike a slope style contest is generally judged by just jump to jump, to jump, to jump, to rail, to whatever it's, it's, there's so many little subtleties in between when you guys are catching air is like, maybe you throw a turn and hack some snow or, you know, it linking the, the course together in a flowy way. You see some people kind of skidding through it. Some people, kind of navigating it different ways, but you have a great way of really kind of being a freaking samurai in the way that you cut through the snow and link the turns together and flow. There's a whole art to that. Do you, do you kind of take the turning into consideration too when you're competing? Yeah. I mean, I guess I just kind of think about it. Like if you are going to film like a line, you know, like if you're doing a contest and you are just chasing tricks and stuff, maybe you're not going to like care so much about those in between moments. But if you are filming like a line, like you want the there like there's some magic moments that happen in between the hits, you know. You just want to like make it look like snowboard how you would want it to look good, you know, and take advantage of all those little like obstacles and yeah. And, and that's the judges the fun part give too, you like, points though for that, right? If you, I would assume yeah, that way. I think listening, so. listening to it, that yeah. someone has some sick like some dudes are doing some switch turns in between and i think they were getting yeah they stacked up some bonies. points for the switch yeah. turns yeah but. for sure i think that like all comes into your run and makes it special and maybe even stand out a little bit more for sure now being in that contest you got to see the best of the best 
ride powder, you're riding against them. Being there in person and seeing all the different terrain, which rider stood out to you the most and why? Man, honestly, this year, like, I, after Alaska this year, Torstein impressed me so much, dude. Like, I I always knew that Torstein was an amazing snowboarder and, like, he maybe wasn't ever, like, one of my favorite dudes, but after, like, watching him ride in Alaska, I was really impressed with the way he was able to, like, lay stuff together, his line selection, and then the way he just kind of handled it and put stuff down. It was, like, really impressive to see. You guys also had a lot of big hype and uh, the Jackson contest when you had the Bend Younger Bro oh, yeah. and Big Air were kind of putting on for their city out there. Mm-hmm. Colonel, Colonel took us down. <laughs> We took an L on that. We took an L on that old one. I I bet on the Colonel again. It was great for me. But yeah, the whole city of Bend, it was was the Colonel against the world. It felt like with the city of Bend there. (laughs) Oh yeah. And we, we felt that one for sure. It was, it was rubbed in our noses decent enough. (laughs) Definitely. There was some memes and stuff and, but memes, huh? Yeah, I mean, nothing like crazy, but like, yeah, like Sage Kotzenberg pissing on Bend, Oregon. <laughs> like, that's, that's not good for the psyche necessarily. <laughs> was Dude. he the one who got the Indiana Jones boulder chasing him on the on Scary Cherry? Was that Sage him? had the boulder yeah. behind him. Yeah, yeah. That, was yeah, yeah that, that was crazy. That was so sick. Yeah, he like jibbed the little uh, it fell like off the pillow the perch. and it broke, and then he did fully have like chunks coming after him. Yeah, that was great. Dude, big air was freaking ripping dude yeah what did oh, yeah. he end up on jackson he put up for his city top, jackson he, he got top second three. he got second right yeah 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 because yeah, it was him and sage in the final battle and then sage took him down mm-hmm. that was our last hope that was ben Oregon's last hope <laughs> <laughs> yeah so but he, got, he definitely impressed everybody what are your results you got three podiums right yeah so i got second at the jackson one the first year which the first year at jackson was unreal the snow like, looked way better oh it was so good yeah that was like one of the better runs i've ever had you know and then, man, what happened after that? I got second to Mickle at the AK1 for the final the first year. And then this year I got third in Alaska. The kid's not kind of bad. an AK threat. Yeah, not a lot bad of people at are all. Saying. Dude, AK I'll take threat. a box. After so many fourth places, the box feels nice. Kid loves you box. In the box, I'll take the box. Yeah. 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 Kid loves box. Love some box. Uh, we didn't really ask because we haven't talked cheddar biscuits. We mm. can't really talk current contracts because yeah. it's kind of it's a little. Uh, but current you know, bisque is not pe- tasteful. People like to know about the bisque. Um, let's say contest contest year. Uh, what's the biggest prize earnings and maybe like matches from sponsors? I think maybe like the biggest one back in the day that I had ever got. I think I got like thirty four, thirty five grand for getting second at the open. Woo. The Burton Open was like. They had the prize money. That was the sickest contest. And, and that includes sponsor match? And then, yeah, had some sponsor match on that one. So on that was top a, of it or in, inclusive? In addition to the 35. In addition. That, that, it's not a match, I don't think, in mm. my contract, but it was like, if you place this here, you get this much. Nice. Kind of in. They kind of ride in the... <laughs> yeah. Would you spend Would you spend that yeah, on? Would you, you, go buy, buy, you buy any dumb shit? You seem like you're pretty frugal. I man. put that shit in the bank. That's so stupid. You just keep putting all your stuff <laughs> in the bank. What do you? Well, I'm spending it all right now. I've been building a house. Worst time ever to build a house. Oof. So a lot of supply chain issues going yeah, on. A lot of supply chain Have issues. Have you been building a house time. for a little while? Yeah. So I bought the law after the Olympics when I was 23, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have a house in two years, and then I'm still like, like hopefully, honestly, hopefully I fly home and I'm I move into that like right now. But oh, I'm, really? That's it's not exciting yet. But yeah, it's never terrible time, on time to build a house. Yeah, the prices of wood just going through the roof, everything. Yeah, it was pretty stressful. So, like, I, I have been saving my money pretty much my whole career. I mean, about a Since truck. Since you were 10, it sounds like. About a truck, you know, you know, like life and stuff. But, like, I've been pretty pretty good at, like, right now I'm living at my buddy Carson's house and the rent's super cheap. Like, I've been, and then you go on the road and you're, like, got some travel budget. So, you're living pretty, pretty, you know, saving money. Kids living good. Well, you bought a Turby. Did you buy that or was it free? I bought that. What, what's a brand <laughs> new that. dude Turby running these days? That thing was seventeen five. Ooh, that's what I like to but see. I now got in. I got money. in spring check before like uh, okay, so before supply chain failures okay, really hit eighteen five. So now they're probably like I I, th- I think they're like twenty. Wow, mm. twenty upwards. I would guess. Damn, for a any new turbo. Anybody a do looking uh, that's watching this show, we will gladly uh, become a. Brand partner with you guys, Skidoo. Yeah, Skidoo, not Polaris, but particularly Skidoo. I would take a Skidoo partnership. Definitely partners with. I would. I would go Polaris. 
You go Polaris? I mean, I would skidoo Polaris, whatever, man. That's Arctic cat? Would you go Arctic cat? If I had, I mean, yeah, choice. A cat? You would turn that down if one. Have you ever ridden an Arctic cat? No. Oh, they are. They're bad. They're that garbage. bad. Yeah, they're. So if they hit they you up crazy. and they're like, Chris, we would like to send you the newest model. You you'd, sell your you'd soul be on like, that one? Or sorry, I'm or not. You stick to the I, bleed, not I bleed do. I bleed do. Personally. You would send it back. You'd be like, yeah, don't. That's yeah. respect. I'd say I'm, I'm good. I don't need I'm talking the free one. Sponsorship. I bleed do. Free cat is almost probably just like a money pit. Just <laughs> 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 dumping you're gonna, money in that thing in that bar. Off. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I remember What's Bjorn, so bad Bjorn about Linus these had had a, uh, like the brand new Arctic cat back when the XM chassis just came out, and I had a I think a brand new 800 or 850. I can't remember what it was. And I felt like I was on a 2003 summit, dude. The <laughs> chassis was like literally like handlebars low. They're like, still like that. Like, lo- like no, the center of gravity is so low. You can't even get them on their side. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't know. I think they got some new ones that are. All I was right, going to say, like, how can they not get with the times? You know, what's up? I think they're working on it, but they're they, working on it. The dew is just so superior. The dew. <laughs> <laughs> At least with Polaris, it's like, those are dope. I mean, you can't deny it. Polarises are dope. You guys just like Articads. I mean, ski dudes. Just very loyal. Bud's is a little just lost. loyal. Bud's a little lost out there. Dude, I I started with a Polaris. Rocky Mountain King. Yeah, I liked it. I was stoked on it. I was like, Red Red was on a Polaris for one year. He had the, it was the Code Red Ruckus. The thing had a wild code rap red. on it, right? Oh, yeah. They, Reggie's always got the wild rap. He's got that bright red do rap, that code red. It's kind of oh perfect, yeah, the honestly. code. Yeah. It's awesome. Code red I love it. Rap. That's but, uh, dope though. He swore by that thing, but he eventually came over to the do. How's Reggie on about. the rooster? Reggie rips, like super low key. Like you wouldn't think he'd be very good, but homie puts the machine where he wants it. Of course he does. He's red. Yeah, he's so good at everything. It's annoying. How is Kurt sledding with Curtis Cizik? Curtis is just so like dialed. He's just like so well put together and like sled boss. Yeah, just so much experience. And then he is just he's another one of those dudes who's just like insanely good at everything. So like he's captain out there for sure. You still been doing a fair bit of sh- uh, fishing, dude. Honestly, my fishing has been kind of fun. I went like a bunch of times this year. I caught like one fish. Kind of sad. I caught, go one, I caught one dog. tiny bass. I went with Kurt Dog actually. Uh, uh, supply chain issues. Yeah, Jet boat fly guides. Chain, I yeah. think there is some supply chain issues on the rivers right now. Actually, it's a little <laughs> harsh. COVID. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, Kurt's the man. He got my brother. He got Z Ferg into a big old steelhead. We just went on a trip with the fam. It's dope. Great, uh, buds. I think it might be time. <laughs> Bacon. Or to crack that bacon. <laughs> beer can. Beer can. Beer can. Beer can. It's a reference to beer can or bacon dot com. Uh, yes. Boomers maybe only know about that. What are you drinking, buds? What I got here, my friends, is a delicious pub beer. It's cheap. It's fun. And now I'm gonna taste it. Yeah, take a take a sip of that. <sighs> beer can. Beer can. It's good. If you're thinking about going to Bald Face Lodge and getting completely obliterated and then not riding against Travis Rice, <laughs> what are you going to choose? I'm going to choose pub beer every that's time. A, that's a good, responsibly, I should say, for legal purposes. For sure. You're, are you hey. a 10-barrel athlete, right? Yeah, for sure. What, what are the perks? You get free beers? Free beers. They hook it up with food, too, at the pubs. And oh, okay. I've been riding with them for a while. Did nice. shit. Local Bend, Oregon group pub. That would be so funny if, like, it went really south, then you turned into, like, a really bad alcoholic. <laughs> You're just, they, like, they got the hiccups. Are, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great sponsor. You're just, like, <laughs> <laughs> things go down. You know, south. at I least mean, I've had a at couple already, face, so I'll, I'll he was being there. responsible. You can't drive anywhere. Well, he freaking d- killed it at the contest. He was doing the right thing. Yeah, he's working out those knots from the tomahawk. Oh, right. yeah. You got to roll these dice Probably here. was dusted. Roll those dice, my friend. All right. What are we rolling these for? Uh, we'll tell you what you got to do yeah. on the crapshoot. All right, that's a four. 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 What is one of your worst bails? <laughs> besides, <laughs> besides bald face. Besides, besides the tomahawk on scary cherry. Dude, have a like. Okay, we'll talk about some ones from back in the day in the half pipe, because those ones are brutal, dude. You like post up on the deck and it is game over. Um. I remember when I was like pretty young, I was learning double cripplers. It was like when double corks were like crit, like you needed to have a double cork. So we were like trying these double corks in the half pipe. And I would just like 
my timing in the half pipe, honestly, especially like spinning front side has always been pretty garbage. And if you go early at all in the half pipe, like you leave the lip early, you're posting on the deck 100%. And I've had like, I did some double cripplers back in the day where I just fully posted right on the deck and somehow like landed like corner of the deck on like, like kind of talk, like tacoed my body this way, like pipe coming up my sternum and like in between my legs and straight just like pissed blood for like a while. No. After that one, like pretty gnarly that, that the half pipe's no joke. That thing's firm. And if you land on the deck, you're going to bounce like 20 feet into the deck or into the flat bottom. And that is like, it's like a twofer it's like injury and then injury. Your dad told me that you had an interesting bail in the Mammoth Grand Prix when you were younger. Yeah. What happened there? I think this is kind of classic. I think if you haven't done this, like, probably haven't eaten it hard enough. But I fully, like, back nine, again, went too early, landed on the deck and full, like, shit my pants. <laughs> Had to pull out of the contest, go clean myself up. So would you say... That one's not fun. Would you say it's safe to say that if you're a pro snowboarder, if you haven't fallen hard enough to shit yourself, you should, you're not a pro snowboarder? Uh, I don't know. Like if you're like, there's a bunch of dudes who are probably really, really good and don't like eat shit that hard that often. But I think it's kind of a, like a little, it's a chink in the belt. It's a notch in the belt. That's like, I can see Nicholas Mueller, like maybe honorable. never shitting. Yeah, yeah. That's he's, what I was gonna he's think. probably like never shit his pants. Yeah. Like maybe Jake Blavelt's like never really shit his cell phone. No. We'll have, have to ask. Have him. you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's kind of a staple mm. kind of. Well, I actually remember I thought it was blood. And then, because it's all warm and numb. Yeah, you don't know what happens. it is. I thought it was blood, and then it was shit. And then you're just like, it's it, like you, you, everybody around you can smell it, and you smell like, like yeah. shit <laughs> and that's not in the, the water. Like I don't think you realize when you take a dump in the toilet, the water blocks the it smell, dampens yeah. the smell. I'm sure, some people. <laughs> but have a, had dry a, dock, <laughs> a dry dock, a dry dock scenario is like it's got a bit of a aroma to it. You could say, but if you if you drop one in that breaches the water, I mean, you get it. Oh, you're yeah. talking about a, be- a are we talking a beached whale. Yeah, we're talking a beached about a beached whale. whale, like a big boy. Yeah. yeah, a big boy above that's, the water that's line. Just a little bit out. I mean, woof. yeah, you're a little backed up after like a couple nights at Olive Garden or something like that. <laughs> Olive you, Garden. you drop yourself a nice beached whale. You, yeah. You're That's gonna, a cheesy woo. breadsticks. Yeah, you're gonna need to light, light a couple of match matches. Just to get shitting re- breadsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited free breadsticks and a bunch of cheese, and then about three days, and then you got yourself a beached whale. Beached whale. Yep. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break and talk to you guys about Bubs Naturals. Now, first things first. The coolest thing about Bubs is the fact that it's owned by snowboarders. So it's uh, snowboarders for snowboarders. You know, they support the show. So might as well support them. With that being said, uh, Jeremy, you broke both of your legs in an avalanche a few years ago, and I know you used some some bubs for your road to recovery. How did it help? It grew my bones back. I mean, straight up. I had the doctor, you know, at two years in tell me I needed another surgery, bigger rods. Uh, the bone wasn't going to grow back. I didn't like the sound of it. Um, I got on the bubs consistent, and over the course of two years, I grew – a ton of bone back enough for my right leg to remodel and, and do its thing and become strong again. Uh, awesome skin. Um, you know, my nails grow like crazy, uh, joints move smooth. I mean, it, it lubed me up good. I notice when I don't take it, I mean, immediately really cool. Well, it's a, it's a protein powder. So how do you, how do you take this stuff? I mean, however you want, I prefer it in, in tea, coffee, um, smoothies, smoothies is my favorite. That's kind of the morning jam. And, uh, but really the, the protein powder is tasteless. So you could even do it in water. I don't recommend that. There's better ways. It's just more enjoyable. I like it with a little coffee. Yeah. That's the way to go. And if you're interested in picking up some bubs, uh, 10% of all profits go to charity, which is cool, but you can head on over to bubsnaturals.com. Use promo code bombhole, all lowercase. Again, Promo code BOMBHOLE at bubsnatural.com for 15% off. Okay, we're going to get into hot takes. Hot little potato right now. Uh, so, question. First one we're going to ask. MJ and or GOAT of snowboarding, both male and female. To you, as it pertains to you, who do you have? Male and female. Um, man, it's a hard question for sure. Hard hitting. Hard hitting question. I'm gonna Big say question. I'm gonna say Terrier as far as dudes. Um, just cause I don't know. I've 
always thought he was the man. Like I got into watching his writing and it's like super inspiring to me. And yeah. Yeah. For sure. Female. You know what I always thought was like kind of interesting? Like you got the MJ and then do you ever have like the, the later generation, like ball LeBron player, or something? like a Bron? Yeah. All right. So who's your Bron? Well, if you go like Terry is your MJ, then do you do like Ricky is like a Bron? Travis is a legitimate. Yeah. That's a Bron for sure. Kind of even built the same, you know. They're even like comparable in like body type. Um, I always thought that was kind of funny. But yeah. um, for women's side of snowboarding, I would say, I mean, I would say Barrett. Great answer. Props. Heavily decorated. Barrett or Jalouse, because she was just Ste, and Barrett was Ste too. Um. But then, like, our era, or, like, closer to, like, my age, I would say Zoe is, like, a high contender for that one even right now. She's, like, really shaking things up, like, even recently, like, doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Future MJ? Yeah. yeah. MJ in training. Uh-huh. She's a junior bacon MJ. Junior you bacon. Junior you know, bacon. You know what I always think about with the MJ, too? So, like, not just in the way that Michael Jordan Ooh, actually sn- snowboarded. Go ahead. Maybe Jana as well. Yeah, Jana's a great... A great answer, uh, but not not just in the way people that people snowboard, but also the way that they're marketed. Like mm. the thing about if you look at Michael Jordan, he was a dude who basically was Nike's marquee athlete. Mm-hmm. He was like the first person to be put in front of you on posters and magazines and everywhere. He was he was he was like larger than life, and mm. in in the sense of that 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 kind of like superhero of our sport. Sometimes I don't look at it just statistically, but I look at like. The, the impact the they, impact had, on the they had on the culture, yeah, too, yeah. you know? Uh-huh. So I think those are all still great answers, but I just think about why we say MJ. Some people look at it from a pure statistics standpoint, too, which is yeah. another, It's and it's how it pertains to you. So it's a fun it's a fun wormhole to go down. For sure. It goes okay, deep. Okay, next question. Most underrated. Who you got? I'd say Garrett Warnick. Wow. I think he needs some props, dude. That Let's kid, give him a he's big so worm. Good. He's so sick. He's so good. He's had, like, a bunch of really good video parts come out, and I don't know. I always just thought he was, like, crushing it, but never seemed to really get, like, the support from the sponsors that he deserves. Could not agree more. One of the most impactful people to see in person and also attitude dude, and just fun to hang with. He's so good. Yeah. It's insane. It's a great answer. Great. Garrett Warnick is a great answer. I love that. Okay, next question. Uh, steel or powder? <laughs> I'm thinking he's going to say steel. I think he goes steel on us. I want that Duff. He wants Give that Hillary powder. Duff. Okay. He wants that General Powell's chicken, if you will. <laughs> All right, B. Ferg, a.k.a. Turd Ferguson. Mm. Best Turd. style ever made. Ever <laughs> done. <laughs> Best, Best style ever made. Ever Best made. style ever. <laughs> um, I'm going to go Johan. Olafsson. Okay, not Johan from Capita. Yo- yeah, okay, I was just like, making sure. Hmm. No, Olafsson. There's Great. a couple clips. Dude, that's tight. It's insane, dude. He has that one legendary turn where his yeah. his like arms... like Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, I've that's been a, trying to do that. I can't. Or I haven't it's yet. It's a heel side turn, right? Or toe side. It's a toe side turn, but his back arm is all the way forward, and he's dragging his yeah. back shoulder on the snow. It's nuts, dude. Yeah, good and choice. then he just has a couple like crazy clips. That's a great answer. We haven't got that one yet. Great answer. Okay, best video, snowboard video ever made. Ever made. My first one was lame. I'm going to go with lame. It's a good answer. That's a respectable answer. Best snowboard graphic ever. Graphic ever. Damn. Um, Man. I like the cat. I like the Terrier cat. That one's dope. The old Sprocking cat. Um, Best graphic ever. I don't know. That's a tough one, too. There's so many good graphics. You got to pick one. You can't Louis Vito us here. I can't dance around the question. No, you can't use your go, media I'm going to hit the cat. I yeah, Sprock and Cat. Sprock and Cat. I got to go to a Burton, too. Maybe those, uh, those like, first twin graphics were sick, too. The one with, the, like, the two chicks on the nose and tail. Mm-hmm. Or even the Ouija board one. Yeah, the Ouija board was pretty sick. I like the Ouija board one. Sidebar, did you get? Did you ever have to do media training for the Olympics and stuff? I did some, like, when I first got on Red Bull, they, like, taught us how to speak with our hands and everything. <laughs> like, oh, really? You're supposed to? <laughs> yeah, you, you want to, like, you want to, like, keep them entertained, I guess. I don't know. 
Did you notice Peter Lyon when he was in, in here out. was talking with his hands Maybe a lot? Did. Yeah, I think that's like uh, proper. You know, I wouldn't know what. To okay, let's talk with our hands. I wouldn't know what to do with them. Okay, so next question: Who is your favorite? Musical artist band. Wow. Musical artist band? Um, Flash band. Right now, I've been super hyped on the the Melvins. <laughs> <laughs> Love the Melvins. That's wow. great. Wow. wow. <laughs> okay. For the people listening, we're moving our hands around while we talk. Okay. Pant over high back or under high back? I've been going... Um, in the high back, under high back. In the high back. In the high back. Between. Definitely, oh. that, when I first was, like, shredding, it was, like, all about over, though. That's OG. And then it kind of changed. But what do you run? Do you run under still? Man, I freaking always ran over, dude, never. And still run over. Or ran, ran the under. high backs under. Sorry, oh, ran okay, the word. pants under. Yeah, you always got to gotta let those high backs bark. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next question. If you go heliboarding with three people, just good times, ripping turns, doing Johan toe sides. Who you taking? I'm taking the bros, Zach and Gabe for sure. Um, and then I'd probably just sub out mom and pops. Like maybe pops gets the early session and mom comes out for the for the afternoon light. The Ferg for copter. the glory hour. Like off the top of my head, I'd say that for sure. B Ferg, G Ferg, Z Ferg, Turd Ferg, yeah. <laughs> Turd Fergelson, Fergal, Turgal. Okay. Worst trend in snowboarding. What do you got? Uh, worst trend. I think being too cool for things is a bad trend in snowboarding. Too cool for school. Too cool for school. Too cool for having a nice convo with some other person. I think that's whack. Great answer. Best trend in snowboarding. Best trend in snowboarding? Just uh, just shredding with the bros. I don't know. That's always been a trend, right? And that's probably the best one. Okay, Great uh, trend. We always talk about the beaver slap in the lift line. When you're going through, you got some snow on your board. Are you someone that smacks an aggressive beaver slap in the lift line, or are you uh, keeping it low key? Yeah, I'll smack a big one every once in a while for sure. Gotta okay. get it off of there. You don't want your you don't want the stress on your ankle. Yeah, true. Yeah, you gotta keep that knee knee limber. Um, go to first try backcountry like step down trick. Mm, go to would be just like front three or switch back five. Go to, yeah. Love it. Well, that's hot. back one. That's hot takes. That's hot takes. Nice. That's hot takes. I was. I want to throw in another hypothetical. All right. If you could recreate the forum eight nowadays, you had bottomless bud. You're building the perfect team. We're talking bottomless bud. But right, no, sick. there's been budget cuts, so it's not eight. Ooh. So we're just six now. No, we're gonna do. Let's do four. Ah, the budgets have slashed. The budgets have been slashed half. So that's almost harder because then you like. All right, forum six. Let's <clears> just, or like you know, top six dream team. Who are you picking? And the dudes who are like crushing right now. Like right now, current. If you're like, we're starting a new brand, we got bottomless budge, but the budge has been cut a little bit. We only got six. I think you go supply okay, chain issues. Three, so you want <laughs> if, if there's been <laughs> minor supply chain issues, not nothing. To Two riders couldn't show up. You want yeah. like three backcountry dudes, maybe like a rogue one in there, and then you want like three dudes in the streets, probably right. Like you got to cover all your. Oh, let's out talk there. streets. Let's get a so street knowledge. I'm gonna go my three like. Backcountry dudes, I would go like Longo, and then I would hit probably Baden, and then I would throw Fat Gabe in there too. Woo! Stacked. Um, you forgot about the whole contest scene with your scenario, though. I did kind of. Huh? That's kind of harsh. Whatever. Just well, then you get. You know, like I'm, a, just doing I'm just throwing. Yes. Yeah, some. Well, then okay, fine. I'll go. Twice, re- then, I'll, gonna then I'll hit Red Gerard. So you're dropping somebody, or is that your fourth? No, I'm keeping it. That's my fourth, and then I'm gonna go Tommy Gesme and. Shoops. Wow, what a team. That is a bit of a what dream a team. team. All right, so it's eight, but then you're going to pick two women, actually. So it's an actually The budget's okay. actually got reinflated. So I would go Sinit for sure. And then, all right, well, let's just put Perky in there. Perky? Jill? Yeah. That's a stacked roster actually, right there. Emma. I want Crosby. Oh, you're going oh, Crosby. Yeah, wow. Go so who just so, got so, cut? So, 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 some younger cut. blood in there. Jill just time got to grow. Turkey got cut. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's got, we're, we got like a time in She was well, on that, and you know, she that, cut. That could be where, you know, yeah, the, you know, the budge, the budge just. Budge is slipping away. Budge is slipping Fleeting away. Fleeting time out there. He checks in the mail. I mean, if I could have both, I'd take both. But Yeah. You can't, though. That's Grab tail, thing. checks in the mail. Yeah. You know what I mean? Okay. Let's get into the setups. What board are you rocking? What do you? How do you set it up? Um, right now, I'm either like running the hometown hero or a custom. Um, hometown hero is on Burton's family tree line. 
and I'll run that. It's pretty like sporadic, changes a lot, but I've been getting narrower. I'm trending narrower. And right now I kind of, I think it's like 21, but I kind of just toss the forearm in there. And if it's oh, somewhere okay. around the forearm, then that's like, that's about right. And then before I would hit zero on the back and like 15 in the front. But right now I've been running like five in the back, 15 in the front, maybe 12 or maybe even 20. It kind of is just sporadic. Five or negative five? Negative five. Negative five. Okay. I yeah. love the forearm technique. That's pretty tight. I'm going to measure my. I think Bud's uses the, Bud said he uses the four skin I technique. I do. That's a whole different technique. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit of a different that technique. Huge stance. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a giant, giant <laughs> anaconda-like <laughs> stance. Droopy stance, if you will. It's a little bit like a turtleneck Big in some ways. Big stance. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so that's your setup. What about uh, uh, edges? You still going McDermy on them, or you just go right out of the plastic? Yeah, no, I've been sending them, so I'll, like, get the boards, and then I straight ship them to the dude because it's just so worth it. Um, what's, what's that cost for a season? Who's paying the bill on that? That I just, like, put into the budget. That's budgeted in. It's my, built into I, your budget. I use like they let me use travel budget for that one. We got. I wonder if we can get a bomb hole discount. But for edges are mad too. sharp, <laughs> and you should send. You should definitely send a board to them. It's worth it. At least one. Like you just one. catch them at an J- event. Just one that nice. you're gonna just like treat real well. One that I'm gonna like, ride right down a set of concrete stairs as soon as I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Send exactly. it to him. It's just done and freaking. Well, fuck. That's kind of like a base grind in itself, huh? Like resharpen the edges. You don't even get on the feature. You're just that first one where you go down the stairs. It's just ruined. Put some new texture in the base. Yeah, we like structure. That's structure. good structure. And what about outerwear and all that stuff? Yeah, Burton outerwear, running the AK stuff, and then boots. I've been riding the Driver X, and I really like those. They're nice and stiff, but they break in well. Um. Bindings are on the Cartel X. Goggles, I'm on the Anon. I hit the relapse quite a bit, but then they got these new, I think they're the the M4W, but maybe they're changing that because it's like, it's not necessarily for the women anymore, but it's just kind of like a smaller frame, and I like those a lot. Now, I noticed you're riding a Red Bull helmet. Uh, you've been running a helmet in the Cunch. What's the vibe yeah. of that? For riding lines and stuff, Good dude, definitely you. like some, on some of those bigger, like scary lines where there is potential to like smoke your dome on a rock. Like it's nice to have the helmet. You just have like a level of like comfortability that you don't necessarily get when you're running just the just the beanie. You know, like if it is like a spicy kind of peppery line, it's nice to have the bucket. There was a couple that I was riding with just a just a hat on, and it was a little rocky, and I definitely didn't like really give her like I would have. I don't think. Now, for the the rider that's just getting into move to the mountains, wants to get into the backcountry, any recommendations? Yeah, I mean, always keep the beacon shovel probe on you. Make sure those beacon batteries are up to you know as high as possible. You don't want those things getting too low. Like anything below like eighty, you should probably rechange the batteries. Don't store it with the batteries. Make sure your stuff works before you go out. Make sure you know how to use it. Probably take an avalanche course and. Uh, yeah, just try to make your stuff streamlined. So if something does hit the fan, then you're ready to go. Love it. I'd like to add, know your uh, people you're going with also know what they're doing because your life isn't there. Sure. Hands. Yeah, that's important to have faith in the people who, like, if you do end up getting buried, like, these guys are badass and they're going to get you out. It's nice to have that on the crew. Okay. Well, B. Ferg, it's been a freaking great conversation, my friend. Uh couple things oh we have some ben ferg prints shot we by do. the one and only stony buds the stoniest the stoniest of buds uh that's available at bombhole.com it's a great method yeah so i love be that sure photo to pick that yeah up. um one of my favorite photos yeah thank you thank you bud you you did the hard stuff i showed up and you took my photo and showed up and i went honor. big yeah Showed up. I went the biggest. I deserved to win. <laughs> exactly. Sean what, Palmer quote. That's what I was going for. <laughs> the yeah. palm, dude. The you palm. did go to biggest. Okay. Uh, all right. Any advice for young boarders that wanted to go pro? Uh, yeah, just like work hard, but make sure you're having fun too. Because if it's not fun, then why are you doing it? Don't do it then. And if you're not, if you're not having fun and you're just working hard, then it's, it's like not worth it and you're not going to get the stuff you really need. But I would say work hard, have fun, for sure. Good balance of those two. And sometimes it. working hard is fun. Get stuff done. Get clips or fucking learn tricks. It's awesome. Great advice. Okay, last thing. You want to throw any thank yous before we put a bow on this? 
Yeah, I want to thank you guys for having me out. Really appreciate it. Um, friends and family, you know who you are. Thanks for all the support and love throughout the years, and thanks to the sponsors, Burton, Red Bull, Anon, Tan Barrel. Yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right, B. Ferg. Well, thank you for coming on the show and your contribution to snowboarding and getting everybody hyped and being cool while doing it. So thank you. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of our listeners, everybody that tunes in, um, everybody that's a Patreon member, uh, everybody that buys merch, anybody that wants to run through a wall with some smelling salts, we appreciate <laughs> you guys. And mainly the snowboard community, it's, it's strong, it's flourishing. And uh, we really appreciate you guys. And we got another episode coming at you next Wednesday. Over and out from the bomb hole.